Hey there, amazing viewers. Welcome back to our YouTube channel, where we bring you your favorite manhwa recaps. Did you know that more than 90% of our viewers have not subscribed yet? So please, if you're enjoying our videos and want to be part of our awesome community, now is the perfect time to hit that subscribe button. Joining our subscriber family means you'll never miss out on any of our exciting content. So, take a quick second to click that big red subscribe button below. And don't forget to hit the notification bell to stay notified whenever we release a new video. Enjoy watching and stay awesome. Somewhere in an icy canyon of the year 3157 of June 21, people have gathered in the place named Alliance Academy Virtual in a platform virtual theater of Area 52 in a Seth Canyon. There was a woman named Rita who was making a presentation with a glowing stone behind her. She introduces to the audience that she is in the Star Empire Grizzly Academy Club. Despite the blizzard weather, the crowd seemed to be not bothered of the occurrence. They were currently having a love broadcast for the assessment of graduates of mainland colleges and university. Rita then showed a hologram image of a woman named Bai Kingwei who was a mainland college graduate. Rita showed an image of Kingwei to be an example as one of the students who passed the ninth level of difficulty. Rita assures that if the freshmen became like Kingway, they would all have a number one rating on their resumes. Rita wondered if the freshmen were be able to pass the test they were about to enter. Meanwhile, Kingway on the background sighs as if she was bored, until some freshman approaches her to impress Kingway. The freshman showed his passion of idolizing Kingway as he lit up his lighter. They had an awkward interaction when the freshman lit up Kingway's chocolate stick and mistaken it as a cigarette. But Kingway kept her posture and gave a brief background of her hard works. Kingway truthfully told the freshman that she spent her night trying her best, but only reaching the seventh level. The freshman had his expectations go low as he realized that Kingway might be hopeless to graduate due to her grade, until a loud audience on the background yelled as he looked for someone. One of the audience with no full context thought about a man he looked up and hoped would come. And the man happens to be Ling, who is a Nanluo College graduate. Ling was spotted looking so mysterious on top of the canyon. A brief history occurred four years ago when the first-year genius represented by Bai Kingwei rose rapidly, then Ling was born, and with great power suppressed all of the geniuses of the same grade in the Xingao Empire. Afterwards, Ling broke various records and shocked the entire Xingao Empire. But Ling was truly mysterious who never revealed his identity, but goes by a codename Ling. Ling is the strongest in the hearts of all the students of the Xingao Empire. After Long caused the crowd's attention, the students were ordered to be silent. Kingway has become bored when the timer starts. But still, one of the students couldn't stop to express his admiration towards Ling. The timer still goes until it stopped on 1 minute and 22 seconds. The students were all confused with the timer that stopped too soon. They all began to realize that Ling might have passed the test. They all couldn't stop being mesmerized by Ling being so strong in a 9th level Seth Canyon which was designed to be very challenging. In Kingway's thoughts, she already knew that someone like Ling would pass. The next day. Inside the Nanluo College Maintenance Agency, there was a student named Lin Chuan who also studies in Nanluo College, who was known as the Shadowless Robot. A student named Lu Xing was precisely explaining to his friends that they need a holographic image in order to slow down the speed of Lin Chuan's repairing process. Bai Kingwei thoroughly analyzes Lin Chuan while the girl on her side named Al Yun who was also a college graduate who ranked third overall. Al Yun was so excited to spill the news about Ling's performance the other night. Al Yun and Lu Qing started to debate when Lu Qing believed that it was possible that someone might surpass Ling despite Ling was known to be strong. Al Yun then agreed with Lu Qing's statement since they are aware that there's a lot of geniuses and talented around. Their conversation didn't even took an hour and all of a sudden, Lin Chuan was already finished repairing a tool for Bai and Al. Lu Qing even attempted to tease Lin Chuan for being overly skilled when it comes to repairing. Al was grateful to see her induction helmet being repaired and looked good as new within 15 minutes, but the helmet now belongs to Lin Chuan since the repairing causes the academy's maintenance to refresh. But Al didn't mind, she even thought of Lin Chuan to join a maintenance team due to his overskills. Lin Chuan was touched by Al's statement, but he was actually looking forward on joining a skilled known maintenance team and hoped to be accepted. Al was the only one being deeply impressed with Lin Chuan. After a minute, Bai and Al decided to head out while Luqing looked heartbroken to see his crush leaving. Luqing despised himself for inheriting a bear man blood from his ancestors and thought perhaps Al would have accepted him. But the two of them were at a disadvantage since Al can't have children. Lin Chuan slapped some senses to Luqing that he would never reach his dream to be Al's man since Luqing was way out of Al's league. Luqing was heartbroken because of Lin Chuan's reality check. Lin Chuan didn't stop talking for Luqing to stop being delusional. Later that night, 
The city was filled with neon lights, while Lin Chuan thought of Luke Chen going to a training camp in Laho City. An airship then went by. Lin Chuan was mesmerized by the looks of it. He recognized the airship to be an imperial escort that would only be dispatched if there was an emergency. Lin Chuan wondered what could be the meaning of the airship suddenly passing by since the East Continent hasn't fought a war for more than a 20 years. Lin Chuan seemed to be not sober and thought of getting some rest in his dormitory. But something had caught Lin Chuan's eyes in a dark alley. He saw something glowing behind the trash bin. Out of his curiosity, he went check the glowing light and saw a ball. He immediately recognized the ball to be the heart meta code. He noticed the ball to have a puzzle pass code. He then felt heavy as soon as he realized that the ball has the legendary 99 centroid code lock that made a lot of people think of it as one of the most challenging passcodes. Lin Chuan was delighted to accept a challenge on unlocking the ball. After a while, Lin Chuan was able to unlock the ball with a challenging passcode. The light went bigger, until the light shoots up the sky, and caused a loud explosion. Later that night, Lin Chuan had a hard time sleeping. He was about to graduate on the next day, but the ball he found still couldn't get rid in his mind, but something bothered him more was the fact that he was uncertain for his future. Lin Chuan decided to stop overthinking things and went to sleep right after, until a code had summoned in his arms, and it spreads in his body like it activated something in him. The next day at 5.30 a.m., Lin Chuan was startled by his alarm clock. He still felt lazy even though it was already his last day of school, but he felt more unmotivated to think that he would be just a corporate slave. Until his bracelet had caught his attention, he wondered what the meaning of the light on his wrist was. Until he got startled to see the same thing on his chest, he then quickly ran into the bathroom. But as he took a glimpse of himself at the mirror, the light in his chest was gone. Lin Chuan also noticed some more mysterious things. He saw that his wound was completely healed on his arm. Lin Chuan was uneasy that morning. Lin Chuan decided to check his whole body state and immediately thought that the strange ball has something to do with it. He thoroughly analyzes his statistics. Lin Chuan was shocked to see that his stage 3 centroid system's compatibility rate was 12%, which means that his centroid compatibility obstruction has been cured. He felt such overwhelming joy in his heart to realize that he could go to a training camp like Luke Chuan and doesn't have to be a corporate slave. Lin Chuan even thought of not hiding his identity anymore as Plume. Lin Chuan felt so confident to be accepted at any training camp since he has the best grade in the academy. Until a newsflash was broadcast about a terrorist attack launched by the Western Continent's Frostblood Dukedom. The news also reported that an armed enemy team has snuck into the city. Lin Chuan felt regrets and thought that the ball he found might have connections to the terrorist attack. Lin Chuan felt like the ball might have some shocking secrets. He knew that the ball must be looking by the police and military since it was one of the important assets. Lin Chuan's best solution was to leave the Nanliwo city as soon as possible. Lin Chuan knew he might be in trouble. Outside of the city, police were lurking around, while Lin Chuan tried his best to be not seen and recognized. Lin Chuan was lucky since the station hasn't been blockaded yet and got his time to escape. Until all of a sudden, a bunch of police were blocking the people who wished to commute. Lin Chuan then felt pressured while the police on his back noticed that he has been a bit suspicious. The police called Lin Chuan out and ordered him to take off his hat to reveal his identity. Lin Chuan felt it won't turn things great. Lin Chuan faced the police and lied about going to a training camp. He knew he was gonna be screwed after lying to an officer. Until someone pats Lin Chuan's shoulder. A professor named Xiang Dao of Namliwo Academy who was an honorary consultant of the training camp of the Great Xingao Empire appeared. Later then. Lin Chuan managed to get out of a troublesome situation. Lin Chuan decided to return Professor Zhang's favor since Lin Chuan was saved by him. Lin Chuan's vision turned into Matrix, and saw a hologram of Professor Zhang having an intense conversation with Ling about the passcode of the ball. Since Lin Chuan was grateful, in return, he gave the solution to Professor Zhang for the stone ball to be unlocked. Meanwhile, Professor Zhang was impressed by Lin Chuan's intelligence. The next day, Lin Chuan had finally arrived at the training camp. Lin Chuan was being observed by the receptionist. The receptionist thought of how lucky Lin Chuan was for unlocking the stone ball before he even graduated. All Lin Chuan has to do was to change into the training camp's equipment. And just like that, Lin Chuan will be an official member of the White Arrow Harbor training camp. Lin Chuan slowly opened the box, and the first thing he noticed was the centroid battle net connector. He was delighted that he finally had his own equipment for professional use. Then a pink-haired woman with a tall tan skin man appeared behind Lin Chuan. Lin Chuan was familiarized, and he recognized the person to be Mu Xuangai. The red-haired man informed Lin Chuan that the pink-haired girl was named Mu Xuangai who was a reserve guard student who came from a powerful background. And the guy next to Mu was Mai Kang who was a genius whose centroid force had reached to stage 7. 
The red-haired man believed that Mai Kang could be an instructor, but he was assigned to be Mu Xuanzai's bodyguard. Mai suddenly glared back at Lin Chuan. While Lin Chuan actually had history with Mu Xuanzai, which he had sparred with in the academy back then. After a while, Lin Chuan went into his room while admiring his centroid battle net. The centroid battle net was loading for a brief moment. After it loads, Lin Chuan got a notification that he is now a reserve guard student at White Arrow Harbor Training Camp. The centroid net then informed Lin Chuan to wait for his character to make. Lin Chuan's figure slowly became solid, until he looked like a Hao cyborg. The centroid net then asked Lin Chuan to collect his reward to the elite training camp of Zingdao's empire. The system then disappeared. While Lin Chuan knew it would be difficult for him since that Zingdao empire is located at the Nanliwo city which Lin Chuan's avoid, Lin Chuan then ordered the city to send him to Centroid City. The system immediately responded to Lin Chuan's request. At the Centroid City, the place looked neat and majestic. Lin Chuan had finally arrived, and the first stop he thought of was the archery building. Lin Chuan decided to train for a while despite its cheap appearance. As Lin Chuan looked around, he noticed all the training grounds and facilities are to be top tier. Lin Chuan grabbed one of the guns even though his Xingdao's basic gun skills could only store two rings of energy in the bullet. Lin Chuan then pulled the trigger, and afterwards, he saw the bullets produced five rings. His shooting range have risen into 50%. That even Lin Chuan himself was in disbelief. Lin Chuan still had doubts and thought maybe the gun was just going easy on him. Lin Chuan did the same thing, but he grabbed a different gun. Yet, his bullets still produced five rings. He then realized that he got enough centroid force he could perform at his original level. But since Lin Chuan's entrance examination will occur the next day, he decided to train more for his gun skills. Lin Chuan smirked with full confidence. After Lin Chuan's training, he finally logged out and noticed that two hours had passed by. But he again saw something strange. He noticed that his body was lighting up again like there was some sort of chip inside. But then, the light in his body disappeared again. Until all of a sudden, Lin Chuan heard the police sirens from outside their building. Lin Chuan then decided to check the police vehicles. Lin Chuan felt like there must have something bad just happened due to a multiple police car he saw. While Lin Chuan was being alerted by the emergency, someone suddenly offered him a discount for a breakfast. Lin Chuan turned around and saw two civilians kindly welcoming him. But in the end, the three of them went gossiping and even made theories about the police urgency. Their theory was that it might be another terrorist attack from the port. The civilian advises Lin Chuan to be more careful due to the high rise of crime rates and deaths. But then another police vehicles went by. But it was more disturbing when Lin Chuan saw blood on the car lights. Lin Chuan kept glancing at the police vehicles until an officer glanced back at him. Lin Chuan let his guard down and forgot that he was keeping his identity to be hidden, yet he was lucky that authorities haven't discovered him yet. Lin Chuan felt the urge to inspect and research about the recent chaos, but he prefers to focus more on his entrance examination. Lin Chuan went back inside the training camp's building. The red-haired man gave the students a logical instruction about their shooting examination. The red-haired man called for Lin Chuan that he will be a part of Group 5 since he didn't collect his group number. Everyone began to make fun of Lin Chuan for being a part of a not-so-good reputation kind of group. But in front of Lin Chuan was Mu Xuanzai and Mai Kang. Lin Chuan then realized that he's gonna be not in good hands after he faces his group. The red-haired man called the group five to enter the examination. And the first one to come forward was Mu Xuanzai. She immediately grabbed a gun and pulled the trigger. Mu Xuanzai only had three attempts to hit the red area at the center of the target, but all she aimed was the sides of the red dot. Mu Xuanzai's performance wasn't quite good because of her family's reputation being not famous for gunning skills, but it was alright since her bloodline was famous for close-range combat. Until spotlights were turned on, and Mu Xuanzai faced more test exams. Mu Xuanzai's shooting skills are so fast that she became blurred in everyone's vision. Everyone was quite impressed despite Mu Xuanzai's not being able to aim accurately. Based on the red-haired man's report, Mu Xuanzai's target aiming accuracy was at 61% with her bullet producing four rings. Mu Xuanzai wasn't pleased with her score while Mai Kang cheered her up since 61% was considered to be impressive. Lin Chuan believed that Mu Xuanzai shouldn't be underestimated due to her average, had quite skilled performance especially that Mu Xuanzai came from such famous family. The next one who entered the examination was Mai Kang, who got a score of 65% who also produced four rings. Lin Chuan realized that he just got himself in a skilled group member. He was quite impressed since he was aware that it's difficult to get a 70% and above score. Lin Chuan concentrated to target his aim. He was about to pull the trigger, but all of a sudden, he produced five rings. Lin Chuan doesn't want to stand out and decided to control his skill. 
Lin Chuen pulled the trigger and pretended like he doesn't know how to use a gun. The bullet hits the board, while Lin Chuen was hoping that no one saw the five rings he produced earlier. The instructor was concerned for Lin Chuen, while Lin Chuen pretended like he was nervous and asked if he could rest for a while. But just when Lin Chuen thought no one noticed him, Mu Xiongnai and Mai Kang actually saw that he on purposely made himself like he has no control over his gun. The two of them then noticed that Lin Chuen actually made five rings. While Mai Kang and Mu Xiongnai glances at Lin Chuen's statistic board, Mu Xiongnai could feel that Lin Chuen has secrets for being strong and smart. Mu Xiongnai was deeply curious about the real Lin Chuen. After a moment, Lin Chuen went back to his examination and got a score of 35 with three rings. But even so, the instructor still praises him. Lin Chuen humbly accepted the instructor's compliment, but deep down, Lin Chuen knew that if he showed his overpowered skill as an average man, they would have suspect him already. Until Mu Xiuengai approached him to give him a compliment, Mu Xiuengai introduces herself to Lin Chuen. But Lin Chuen could read Mu Xiuengai being suspicious towards him. Lin Chuen's hand was grabbed all of a sudden by Mai Kang. Mai Kang then introduced himself while shaking Lin Chuen's hand. Mai Kang then offered Lin Chuen if they could exchange some blows so they could learn from each other. Lin Chuen knew he will be in no good hands. He immediately turned down the offer since he felt uneasy. Lin Chuen quietly walked out while walking so fast. After the examination, Lin Chuen went back to the Centroid Battle Net training grounds. He was delightful as he realized that his skills had increased due to training. He knew he must be stronger in order to investigate the secrets of the stone ball. Until he received a notification that they must gather in the lobby due to an urgent mission. Lin Chuen then assumed that the mission might be related to the urgent he had witnessed before the examination. Everyone had gathered in the lobby. The instructor informed everyone about the tragic deaths and murder incidents going around their city for a month. The instructor advises everyone to carefully open their eyes while being in a patrol duty. The instructor made Lin Chuen to be part of Mu Xiuengai and Mai Kang's group again for them to patrol the harbor. But Lin Chuen was being cautious and pretended to be weak so he won't be a part of Mu Xiuengai's group again. The crowd agreed with Lin Chuen but deep down they were infatuated with Mu Xiuengai. Mu Xiuengai on the other hand doesn't mind that Lin Chuen was being part of her group since they were acquaintances. But Lin Chuen still wanted to avoid Mu Xiuengai that he made his subordinates to swap places with him. Until Mai Kang appeared in front of him and brings up their agreement earlier about learning from each other. Lin Chuen still pretended to be weak and a wimp so he could avoid the people whose suspicion towards him. But Mu Xiuengai assures that she and Mai Kang could protect themselves while Mu Xiuengai's fans were beaten on the ground by her. After their quick urgent meeting outside the city, there are still civilians strolling around the mentioned area that needed to be investigated. Lin Chuen, Mai Kang, and Mu Xiuengai arrived at their duty. And even though there were officers on patrol, there were a group of brats who recklessly catcalled Mu Xiuengai. Mu Xiuengai was furious towards the guys who cackled her, yet she let it slide. Mu Xiuengai vented her anger against Lin Chuen for not doing anything to protect her from the perverts. But Lin Chuen gave a logical response that Mu Xiuengai's family hired a Mai Kang to protect, but Mu Xiuengai thought it was irrational for Lin Chuen to just be a bystander. Instead of apologizing, Lin Chuen decided to be an ignorant again by describing himself as a wimp and a weakling. Later that night, everyone started their patrolling duty. While they were patrolling, Lin Chuen was curious and asked his superior named Senior Huan if there were any lead for the murder cases that had occurred for months. Zhu Huor goes by Senior Huan, a police officer, and a Nanluo Academy senior, believed that the murder case was classified for a trainee. Even though the murder investigation was too classified, Huan still gave them a brief background of how major the murder cases was that includes three different criminals, and it could even cause panic to the residents of the White Arrow Harbor. All of a sudden, Lin Chuan felt something unusual as he heard a scratch from the big statue. With one look, Lin Chuan finds it difficult and irritating that he couldn't stand the screeching sound from the big statue until the statue released a red aura slowly. Until the organization team saw something unusual from the sea that they instantly pointed the spotlights to it. But the unusual movements in the sea were just a white arrow fish king that hopped so high. The king fish hopped like a big whale that it caused a huge splash as it returned to the sea. For a moment, they felt relieved that it was just a false alarm and no threat was seen nor sensed in the area. But Lin Chuen still felt something was wrong. He could still hear the screeching sounds that the threat was visible to his naked eye. But Lin Chuen was lucky that he had an ability that gave him a burning hot feeling that calmed him down unexpectedly. Not only Lin Chuen felt uneasy that night, Mai Kang and Mu Xiuengai could also sense that something was not right. Lin Chuan asked Mu Xiuengai if she has any idea where the threat was, but despite Mu Xiuengai using her family's secret about the awareness technique, she still couldn't find the suspicious threat. 
until a red light was spotted on the harbor among the containers. Everyone rushes onto the red light. Lin Chuan and the rest ran and came along to help their superiors. As they run, Lin Chuan described the suspicious threat as something like an unusual flower scent that starts to decrease. He still couldn't figure out what was going on. But as they run, their superiors stopped them from getting along due to the policy. The three of them wasn't pleased that they won't be able to help their superiors. Mu Xiuanai on the other hand felt a bit disappointed that she couldn't recognize the unusual despite using her awareness technique. Lin Chuan then comforted her that it was not her fault since the situation was just too unusual. Even a man like Mai Kang knew the opponent was too strong with a murderous intent. Mai Kang instead just felt relieved that they didn't encounter their unusual opponent. Until, the instructor called Lin Chuan. The instructor brought along Lin Chuan and his group for them to learn lessons in their duty until they become an official officers. Until they finally reached the spot where the unusual feeling they felt came from earlier. They were all shocked to see the terrifying looks of the civilians with their arms crossed to their chest while laying on a demonic symbol. Mu Xiu and I began to throw up to see a bunch of dead corpses that made Lin Chu and believe that the scenario was too much for a newbie like them. The instructor and his colleague began to talk about how intense the situation was. Their team made a conclusion that the horrifying scenario might be the doings of the Blood Elves. But on the other hand, the instructor and his colleague promised to not leak any information about the case. Based on Lin Chuan's knowledge about the Blood Elves, the Blood Elves of the Western feed on fresh blood. In short, the Blood Elves are described like a vampire of the earth. After the instructor was advised by his colleague to not share further information, he decided to order Lin Chuan and his group to follow Officer Zhu instead of staying at the crime scene. The three of them was just relieved that they do not have to be in the crime scene longer since the gore was too much for the three of them to handle. The instructor on the other hand, felt deja vu as he remembered the tragedy of the White Arrow Harbor. After they witnessed the crime scene, Huan drove Lin Chuan and the rest away from the harbor. While they drive, Lin Chuan was curious if the crimes that was committed before had something to do with the Blood Elves. Huan replied that based on their investigation, they are certain that the past crimes aren't committed by the Blood Elves because of its kind who doesn't cover up crimes. Mu Xiu and I joined the conversation. She then gave Lin Chuan a few background that the Blood Elves has done the same crime before exactly at the White Arrow Harbor. Lin Chuan couldn't believe that the rumors were true. Mu Xiu and I informed Lin Chuan that the Blood Elves hunt the people of the White Arrow Harbor on a large scale every few decades, but unfortunately, no one had cracked the terrifying case before. The Blood Elves were so notorious to the point that officers were ordered to guard the White Arrow Harbor resident. But despite how serious the situation was, Lin Chuan spoke his mind out like it was a good idea that he must avoid working around the White Arrow Harbor due to the level of danger. Mu Xiu and I was triggered and yelled at Lin Chuan, but Lin Chuan would rather tease Mu Xiu and I more by telling her that he's just a weakling. At that point, Mu Xiu and I thought of how hopeless Lin Chuan was. The three of them finally got some rest. Lin Chuan was still grateful that Mu Xiu and I and Mai Kang didn't expose him, but importantly, he was thankful they didn't ran into a blood elves. Lin Chuan still didn't know purpose of the stone ball that changed him, but B was certain that it gave him great benefit. But he would still rather keep it a secret especially for those with greedy and malicious intentions. And because of Lin Chuan's new ability, he could train ten times faster on the centroid battle net than in reality. By that, it allowed Lin Chuan to raise the stage of his centroid force faster than anyone else. But in terms of practicality, Lin Chuan decided to be stronger than upgrading his centroid force so he could protect himself from the dangerous world he was living in. Somewhere in the city, there are two strange mutant humans who talked about the Blood Elves ruining their plan. The snake-looking man gave a response that they must be more wise about their plan since the special guard team will arrive. But the strange organization with an animal-looking heads were all bloodthirsty. They all chant to kill more for their heart's content. The underling even begged his boss to order them to make a move for them to have great human meal. Until then, the strange organization were done preparing and was ready to ambush the humans from the White Arrow Harbor. Back to the White Arrow Harbor guard post. The murderous aura had returned, and it became bigger than ever. Then half a month later had passed at the White Arrow Harbor guard post. Mu Xiu and I felt so tired handling all documents that kept on piling up. She was so annoyed that their superiors just couldn't let them investigate the danger zone. But Mu Xiu and I became more annoyed when Lin Chuan on her side was just chilling instead of working for half a month. Meanwhile, Mai Kang also couldn't stand doing a lot of paperwork, but he kept his professionalism by comforting Mu Xiu and I. All of a sudden, Lin Chuan became more aware when he felt the same senses he had back when they were patrolling at the White Arrow Harbor. The murderous aura then got inside the fence. Lin Chuan knew the danger was too high since the highly classified guards couldn't even sense the threat that got inside their building. As Lin Chuan glances at the window, 
he saw how the guards couldn't sense the urgency. But what's more bothering in Lin Chuan's mind was how rich Mu Xiuanai's family was, since she was just working at a post office, yet her family sent a bunch of bodyguards to protect her. Outside the building, more corpses were bagged up while the murderous aura contaminated the dead corpses. Lin Xuan felt so uneasy that his gut feeling were telling that something bad was about to happen, while Mu Xiuangai kept whining from all the paperwork. Until Mu Xiuangai glances on Lin Chuan, she noticed the scared looks of Lin Chuan. She got up and assures to Lin Chuan that they'll be protected by the threat due to her numerous bodyguards. But Lin Chuan's senses were intensified that he heard the screeching sounds again. Mu Xiuangai then realized that Lin Chuan wasn't playing anymore. Until a loud bang at the door was heard, and all of a sudden, the murderous aura barged in. Lin Chuan was instantly alerted and sensed the threat at the morgue. Lin Chuan warned Mu Xiuangai and Mai Kang that something's wrong was really going on, he then yelled at them to dodge quickly. Mu Xiuangai and Mai Kang wondered why they were being warned by Lin Chuan. But luckily, Lin Chuan got fast reflexes due to his ability, and grabbed Mu Xiuangai to dodge the big explosion. And for Mai Kang, he instantly went behind a locker to protect himself. The explosion had reached their building, until the flames spread everywhere. Fortunately, Lin Chuan and Mu Xiuangai was able to defend themselves by hiding under the desk. Mai Kang wanted to go and protect Mu Xiuangai but the flames were too big and might affect him. After the explosion, the murderous aura went back at them. This time, Mu Xiuangai could also feel the aura, and she recognized it as the flesh bomb. She then advised Lin Chuan to put on a helmet due to the smoke being poisonous. The two of them were safe for a moment due to their gear. They wondered how it was possible that the guards didn't sense the danger inside the building. But the chaos didn't stop when they heard a gunshot. As they stood up, they saw a group of people standing in the middle. The officers held a gunpoint and warned the strange organization to be still or they will pull the trigger. One of the crocodile-looking man even insulted the existence of humans that he underestimated the one who wishes to go on their way. The officers didn't hesitate to shoot against the opponents. Unfortunately, one of the opponents has a bulletproof skin. As the strange organization attacks, they noticed a woman along the humans and even thought of something malicious. The officers knew they just faced a higher level threat and made them contact the elite officers to give them a hand. Back to Lin Chuan's side, Mu Xiuangai shivered as she heard the voice of their subordinate named Jia. She already felt bad that they might face a horrible fate. Mai Kang then instantly made an escape plan. He instructed Lin Chuan to hold a gun since he was good at his gun skills while Mai Kang assures that he will guard the rear. But in Lin Chuan's defense, he believed that they should not make any rash moves even though they are safe for a while. But Mu Xiuangai was truly terrified that they might all die. Mu Xiuangai's statement even made a lot harder for Lin Chuan to focus his mind. After a while, Mai Kang guarded Lin Chuan and Mu Xiuangai from the rear. Mai Kang then sensed the opponents on the second floor. He favored Lin Chuan to guard safe Mu Xiuangai. While they walked quietly, Lin Chuan warned Mu Xiuangai to not make any rash moves as he noticed that their opponents aren't human-like. But just when they thought they were safe, one of the crocodile-looking opponents smelled their human blood and craved to munch them alive. But the opponent craved for a woman human meat more. The three of them instantly ran away from the monster. While the monster was bloodthirsty and craving for human meat, Mai Kang who was next to the monster was horrifically terrified. But he endured all the fear and decided to face the monster. The monster then fought back. But all Mai Kang could do was to shield and moved back to hold the monster from chasing Lin Chuan and Mu Xiuangai. But problems were intensified when two more opponents had arrived shooting recklessly against the three of them. Mai Kang wasn't able to fight back until he got himself sitting on the ground from defending himself. At that moment, Lin Xuan realized that their opponents intended to kill them all, but all Mu Xiuangai could think of was to help Mai Kang who's being gang up by the monsters. Mai Kang was about to be attacked by another monster. He realized that he will lose due to the strength differences he has with the enemy. The monster jumped high with his weapon to finish off Mai Kang. He went on full force and hoped Mai Kang's shield would break. Mu Xiuangai begged Lin Xuan to help Mai Kang or else he will be finished. But just when Mu Xiuangai turned around, Lin Xuan was nowhere to be found until two transparent laser appeared all of a sudden. The light was too fast that the two monsters were caught off guard. It turns out, it was Lin Chuan's bullets that hit the two monsters. Mai Kang then informed Mu Xiuangai that Lin Chuan will take care of the two monsters with guns. He then believed that the job would be easier if they fought against the alligator. Mu Xiuangai decided to step in the battle. Mu Xiuangai and Mai Kang then became a duo. The two of them drew their swords, until the alligator became more serious as he saw two more humans who's about to fight him off. On Lin Chuan's side, the two monsters were calling for their colleague to come out since their colleague was a sworn enemy of the Mu family. Back to Mu Xiuangai's side, the alligator made a move by summoning a huge flame against them. Mu Xiuangai, 
and Mai Kang immediately defended themselves with their high-class shields. But not only the alligator was their opponent when a wolf appeared in front of them. Turns out, the Mu family was the sworn enemy of the Black Wolf race. As the wolf came out, he was more determined to kill all the humans in frontier of him. The wolf swore that after he successfully killed Mai Kang and Mu Xiuangai, he would offer the two of them to his ancestors that the Mu family killed 2,000 years ago. In Mu Xiuangai's defense, 2,000 years ago, her ancestors created a battle technique that made her ancestors undefeated consistently against the wolf race. Mu Xiuangai swore that she will carry on her family's legacy on hunting down a wolf like she was meant to. But the wolf was actually aware of the technique which was called the glowing dagger technique. He wasn't even intimidated by Mu Xiuangai. All the wolf could feel in the battle was rage and revenge. He even thought of killing Mai Kang in front of Mu Xiuangai for her to feel miserable. Mu Xiuangai was in her position until something had caught her eye. She became terrifyingly concerned for Lin Chuan, as his silhouette appeared behind the smoke. But as Lin Chuan arrived, there was a monster laying in front of him. It was a monster being completely defeated. Lin Chuan arrived with a bright smile on his face for Mu Xiuangai to not worry a thing. More monster had appeared as soon as the Lin Chuan, Mai Kang, and Mu Xiuangai was reunited in the battle. The three of them provoked each other, and the wolf decided to take Lin Chuan's head first. But Lin Chuan didn't make any intimidating approach, he even felt bad for killing an enemy and even smiled in front of the wolf. But the wolf was more provoked and asserted his dominance by assuring he will kill every guard in the post. The wolf dashed as he was ready to kill Lin Chuan with a single blow. But in Lin Chuan's case, he even thought of teasing the wolf for attempting to stab him unskillful. But the wolf seemed to have a trick up his sleeves, while Mu Xiuangai yelled and warned Lin Chuan to not let his guard down. On that moment, Lin Chuan began to overthink on how he could dodge all the fast attacks of the wolf. But even so, Lin Chuan didn't show a fear emotions. Lin Chuan then quickly blocked the wolf's huge sword. Lin Chuan uses his quick reflexes to dodge any move the wolf would make against him. Lin Chuan then attempted to stab the wolf. But the wolf recognized Lin Chuan's move called Reflective Blade. Lin Chuan and the wolf's sword collided as they both counterattacked. In the wolf's mind, he was aware that only stronger than its opponents were the only ones who could use a reflective blade. The wolf noticed how fast and cautious Lin Chuan was as he could think of backing away with every missed attacks he attempted. But then the wolf was insulted as he thought Lin Chuan was looking down on him for using a reflective blade. He was provoked and furious. The wolf counterattacked mutinously, but in his every move, Lin Chuan always had a quick response. Their swords kept clashing at each other, and no one was still scathed. The wolf realized that Lin Chuan was no ordinary even though Lin Chuan's strength displayed a below centroid force stage 4, yet Lin Chuan could utilize his full strength and fight on equal footing with the wolf. But Lin Chuan didn't stop on attacking, until the wolf was caught off guard and Lin Chuan managed to slice his ear. The wolf became silent as he felt dumbfounded. The wolf knew how strong Lin Chuan was to the point that he called his colleagues to help him fight against Lin Chuan. The colleagues were immediately alerted. But for Mai Kang and Mu Xiuangai, they were concerned but they believed Lin Chuan could handle it by his moves in the battlefield. Mai Kang fully believed in Lin Chuan that he would never lose. But Mu Xiuangai was just being a concerned friend. She still wanted to help Lin Chuan despite knowing the fact that Lin Chuan defeated Mai Kang before in a sparring battle in their academy back then by using a reflective blade. Mai Kang remembered the depressing events he experienced after he lost against Lin Chuan. But then he remembered how much of a help the reflective battle was in real life. Mai Kang remembered his teacher who lectured them that it would be impossible to use the reflective battle in real life, but as he looked on Lin Chuan, he thought of how much of a joke of what his teacher said, until more police officers arrived at the post office. That made the monster distracted from the fight. But while they let their guard down, Lin Chuan already made a move. But unfortunately, Lin Chuan stepped on a cracked surface and made him slip. The wolf thought it was finally their chance to finish Lin Chuan because of his clumsiness. The wolf didn't hesitate to attack. While Lin Chuan was struggling to get his foot out, Lin Chuan finally got his foot out, but the monsters went after him all at once. Turns out, it was Lin Chuan's plan along to get all the monsters come at him. He then swung his sword. He then immediately backs away as the wolf missed his attack again. Lin Chuan jumped and instantly counterattacked the wolf. And for the wolf, he became more certain that Lin Chuan's been using the reflective blade. Fast forward to a scenario when Mai Kang was being scolded for letting Mu Xiuangai save Lin Chuan in the battle. But Mai Kang made it clear that in the battle, their opponents were pretty strong and that they needed to be a team in order to be alive. But deep down, Mai Kang's pride was hurt due to his beliefs and principles on being a soldier. Back to the battle between the wolf and Lin Chuan. In the end the wolf was badly scathed by the swords of Lin Chuan. Lin Chuan also had scratches, yet deep down he was grateful to be training for two weeks and gotten stronger. 
At the end of the battle, all the monsters stumbled on the ground and Lin Chuan was the only one left standing. Meanwhile on Mu Xiuengai's case, her servants had been too curious about her relationship with Lin Chuan to the point that they assumed that they were dating. The rumors were too scandalous even though they just assumed that someone like Mu Xiuengai could be dating a commoner like Lin Chuan. The man begged to a woman named Lady Su to not spread such rumors. Back when they fought off the monsters, Mu Xiuengai and Mai Kang carried Lin Chuan after he passed out being victorious in the battle. Until Lady Su arrived at the scene. She then uses her contacts to analyze the chaos that occurred in the post guard. Lady Su immediately recognized all the targets with her high-level technology in her eyes. She then drew her crossbow that automatically shoots all the target opponents. She then released the arrows that could shoot way too fast, and left all the enemies being off guard that they didn't know they were about to be killed by the arrows. All monsters were hit including those who aren't seen on the window. Lady Su was somewhat fierce when it comes to battle, and has a great skill in a far range. The officers inside the building instantly recognized the high-tech weapon that Lady Su used. They were finally relieved as soon as they found out that their backups had arrived. They all cheered knowing that they'll be safe from then on. After the terrorizing events, Instructor Carey visited Lin Chuan at his hospital bed. He was a proud teacher for Lin Chuan being able to survive all the chaos he had gone through within half a month. Due to Instructor Carey's joy, he pats Lin Chuan's injured arm and praised him for being courageous. Instructor Carey then heads out and wished Lin Chuan's recovery to be fast since he'll be dealing with lots of work. As Instructor Carey went out, he bumped into Mu Xiuengai. He winked at Mu Xiuengai like he knew about the dating rumors. But Mu Xiuengai has no idea why would Instructor Carey be winking at her. As Mu Xiuengai goes in, she teases Lin Chuan for looking like a dumpling. But Mu Xiuengai was actually aware that Lin Chuan's trying to fool everyone whenever he acted like a weakling. Lin Chuan wasn't in the mood as soon as Mu Xiuengai started to make fun of him. Mu Xiuengai then informed Lin Chuan that she ordered the hospital to use such imported medicine for Lin Chuan to recover in no time. But then their conversation became depressing when Mu Xiuengai informed Lin Chuan that a lot of officers in the post guard had died. Lin Chuan didn't show his grieving emotion towards Mu Xiuengai, instead he cheered her up by looking on the brighter side that they survived. Just when their conversation became wholesome when Mu Xiuengai showed her gratitude, Lin Chuan teases her to make an incident report that will make Lin Chuan a pride hero with lots of dramatization. Mu Xiuengai was triggered that she felt the urge to punch the life out of Lin Chuan. Lin Chuan then favored Mu Xiuengai to make her report like how Mai Kang did. But Mu Xiuengai became silent when Lin Chuan mentioned about Mai Kang. Mu Xiuengai then poked a glass of water on Lin Chuan's face for speaking too much nonsense and even thought of making fun of her despite being badly injured. But outside the hospital room, there was a chamberlain of the Mu family who was in shock thinking the rumors might be true. The chamberlain quickly ran into Mai Kang to reassure if the rumors were right, but Mai Kang tried his best to tell the truth that Lin Chuan and Mu Xiuengai are just friends. The chamberlain went nuts to see a young lady like Mu Xiuengai handing a water to a commoner like Lin Chuan. But Mai Kang made it clear that Lin Chuan deserved to be treated right, because if it weren't for him the two of them will be a goner. But because Mai Kang had a red face, the Chamberlain thought he might actually be lying. He then starts to panic as he thought the rumors are indeed correct. But since Lady Su was beside them and heard their entire conversation, the Chamberlain begged Lady Su to keep her mouth shut on spreading the rumor. Lady Su's real name was Su Duanpo, but in Su's perspective, she believed that Mu Xiuengai is a free woman and that it doesn't matter if the rumors were true or not. But the Chamberlain made it clear that the Mu family are just strict since they follow their ancestors' tradition. But Su thought of how hypocrite the Mu family was, since Su hooked up with Mu Xiuengai's father before. The Chamberlain began to stutter. But then Su walked away since she doesn't have anything to do with the Mu family's matter. As Su walks away, Su thought of how lucky Lin Chuan must have been. She even thought of hammering Lin Chuan into shape afterward. While Lin Chuan was chilling in his bed, he remembered half a month ago that he sold the designs for the White Arrow Fish King's special use radar to the Rhine family. But not only Lin Chuan earned a lot of money. He also gained a dagger made from the fish king's mouth bone. Lin Chuan began to think more practical on earning more money by doing more commissions and raise his rank to an intermediate grade repairman. And all of a sudden, Su came for a visit in his room. Lin Chuan wondered what's with Su's sudden visitation. Su praised Lin Chuan's unexpected great performance when it comes to battle, but she was more curious about Lin Chuan knowing her identity. Lin Chuan then told Su that Mu Xiuengai is a big fan girl of hers who couldn't stop talking how much she idolizes Su. Su then wishes Lin Chuan to get better. She also reminded Lin Chuan that she will have some business with Lin Chuan right after he get discharged. Lin Chuan became super curious and pondered about why would a beautiful woman like Su would be interested in his presence. 
until another person came to visit Lin Chuan and made him think that he might have gone popular. It was the Chamberlain who made a visit. The Chamberlain offered a secret deal with Lin Chuan. The Chamberlain pulled out a gold card that has 30,000 gold coins. Lin Chuan was startled with the sudden major offer he was receiving. In Lin Chuan's mind, he thought his prayers are answered since he's broke, or maybe the Mu family are just thankful that Lin Chuan saved Mu Xiongai. The Chamberlain looked directly at Lin Chuan with an intimidating look and told Lin Chuan to break up with Mu Xiongai to avoid more chaos with the Mu family in the future. But Lin Chuan was deeply confused with the Chamberlain's offer. But since Lin Chuan badly needed a money, he instantly took the card off the Chamberlain's hands and with a greedy smile on his face, he assures that he has no future with Mu Xiongai. The Chamberlain was in deep shock that Lin Chuan didn't even hesitate to think of Mu Xiongai. The Chamberlain went speechless since he expected the scenario to be like the TV dramas he had watched. Lin Chuan even gave the Chamberlain a logical solution by telling Mu Xiongai that Lin Chuan accepted the gold card for her to think that Lin Chuan was a scumbag, or the Mu family could just withdraw Mu Xiongai from the camp. But the Chamberlain thought it would be unnecessary since he just wanted Lin Chuan to act normal, yet he must stay away from Mu Xiongai. Since Lin Chuan really wanted the gold card, he even insisted in making a contract for their agreement. The Chamberlain couldn't believe how greedy Lin Chuan was. Lin Chuan even respectfully says farewell to the Chamberlain. After receiving such high amount of money, Lin Chuan began to fantasize all the things he wanted to spend like chilling at the north zone of the White Arrow Harbor or take some repairman rank advancement classes. Lin Chuan was so excited on spending his money without thinking any practicality. Until Mu Xiongai barged in being deeply furious against Lin Chuan for taking the breakup fee. But Lin Chuan didn't care even though they weren't really dating since Mu Xiongai's family are super rich. Mu Xiongai tried to grab Lin Chuan to explain their misunderstanding situation to the Chamberlain for him to return the money. But Lin Chuan was just too greedy. After a while, inside the Centroid Force battle net, Lin Chuan decided to hop in to do more training. Lin Chuan was holding a folder named the Sentry's Win Technique. Lin Chuan heard about the continent's madman who lived 2,000 years ago that became an unparalleled expert in his generation. Lin Chuan was deeply serious on learning the technique for him to increase his strength and pass the centroid force stage 4. However, the technique has flaws in it. The folder only contains the first centroid force. Lin Chuan wondered if he would even succeed in training the technique. Lin Chuan didn't mind the fact that he might increase his strength exponentially as long as it would be easier for him to break past the stage 4 centroid force. Before Lin Chuan moves along with the training, he thought of the aftermath that he might be considered as a centroid expert. He was so sure that he wanted to be strong in order to protect himself. Before Lin Chuan starts, he wanted to make sure the level of difficulty when it comes to learning the technique. Lin Chuan meditates that his physical appearance except his heart became transparent. His heart beats faster, and his soul was enhancing its spirituality until he opened his eyes. A strong wind came out right after he meditated. He then stood up to stretch. Lin Chuan couldn't believe it was that fast to learn the initial steps in learning the sentry's wind technique. Lin Chuan then thought that his fast learning experience might have something to do with the stone ball. He finds it so mysterious, yet a loss of opportunity for not being able to examine the stone ball. But Lin Chuan assures that he must be stronger in order to investigate the stone ball. Lin Chuan thought of consuming a medicine in order to make his training faster. But the cost of the medicine was 200 gold coins. He felt a little dismayed if he should drink up the bottle for S training. But then he remembered the madman he was looking up to since Lin Chuan wanted to be like the legendary madman. The next day on the Centroid City training grounds, he face palm when he thought of how expensive his training was. At that moment, he became desperate for money. Until someone recognized Lin Chuan and called for his name. The man looked like a friendly person, but Lin Chuan couldn't recognize him. The man whispered to Lin Chuan that he was recognized by the name Plume. Lin Chuan felt so awkward that he turned his back to the man, but then the man grabbed his shoulders. The man promised that he won't tell anyone about Lin Chuan's secret. Lin Chuan then gave the man a chance to hear him out. The two of them went to the Centroid City Exchange Center after their interaction. The two of them went to chill at a private room number 303. While Lin Chuan lays casually, he expected the man to speak up about his agenda. The man just wanted Lin Chuan to admit his secret since he promised that he would never tell anyone. But for Lin Chuan, he would rather negotiate than just recklessly telling a stranger his secret. The thought of how heartless Lin Chuan was even though they have been on the same team and got each other's backs. But Lin Chuan still couldn't remember the man even though they went to the same school. The man decided to cut to the chase and informed Lin Chuan that the Great Xingdao Empire's elite training camp was going to take in lots of students on that year, until the camp increased its standards mysteriously. Lin Chuan began to be intrigued with the man's story. 
The man then explained that some accepted students might be kicked out since some legendary student didn't report to the camp that made the higher-ups upset and decided to eliminate a portion of accepted graduates. Lin Chuan then tried his best to hold his laughter when he realized the man's concern was that he might actually be kicked out of the camp. The man started to cry when the camp's standard was to base from the student's gun skills that even the centroid experts are having difficulties with it. But for the man's case, he found a perfect opportunity when he witnessed how strong Lin Chuan was and thought of training with him. The man promised that he'll pay Lin Chuan in return of training him, but Lin Chuan was aware of how insane the camp's standard was and wanted to refuse. But then the man already transferred his money due to his desperation. But since Lin Chuan badly needed the money, he instantly accepted the offer. Lin Chuan still denied the allegations of him being Plume, but he became more friendly around the man and promised to make him skillfully. Later that day, outside the White Arrow Harbor's central hospital, Lin Chuan revealed the man to be Jing Keijing. Lin Chuan admits that Jing wasn't easy to train with from the start, but he didn't mind since he was earning a lot of coins from Jing. Lin Chuan decided to not spend his money for a while and celebrate since he was finally discharged at the hospital. Until a luxurious car stopped in front of him which Lin Chuan recognized it as the Empire's Suspension Force car. And in that car was Su, Mai Kang, and Mu Xuanai. The car's aesthetic pleased Lin Chuan's eyes that he didn't hesitate to ride into one. While they were riding, Su reminded Lin Chuan to work since he was already discharged. The happiness inside Lin Chuan turned into frustration when he realized he already must work instead of relaxing for a while. Later that evening, Lin Chuan still doesn't have any idea where Su will drove them to. Mu Xu and I informed Lin Chuan that they'll be going to the red light district in the North Sacred. But Lin Chuan heard that the place had decreased its crime rate for the past few days. He wondered why would they go to such mid-safe place. Minutes had passed, they finally arrived at the red light district. And outside of the nightclub, there were officers on duty patrolling. The first thing that Lin Chuan had noticed was how big and luxurious the nightclub was. But that's not only the case, the guards of the nightclub were animals just like their opponents before. Even though the guard hasn't done anything yet, Su made a sudden introduction and kicked the guard to his face and wishes to see the manager of the nightclub. But Mu Xuangai seemed to be excited to visit the nightclub since it was her first time. Because of Su's scary introduction, the guards let them all in. But because of Su's bargaining, the animals of the nightclub wondered how would they have a normal conversation if she was being rude. But Su doesn't want to waste time since her patients are limited and just wanted to meet the superior. Not only animals were in the nightclub, there were also human beings. But some aren't having a great time. The four of them sits on a VIP table to wait for the manager. Mu Xuangai then informed to Lin Chuan that the operation occurred when Su found an evidence that involves the attack from the post guard. Mu Xuangai then asked her idol if Su would annihilate the canine people's base. But the answer to Mu Xuangai's question will soon be find out if Su would be disrespected. Until they heard a creak from the door. The superior had finally arrived and looked like an old fox. Su cuts to the chase and pulled a device that she had found. That looked like a small rectangular piece with lights in it. Until the piece showed as hologram of a wolf having a conversation with a mysterious man covered in hood. Based on the hologram, the wolf and the mysterious person were exchanging deals that made them look satisfied. Mai Kang immediately recognized that the wolf was their opponent before and the bag that the wolf was holding was the flesh box. The superior immediately recognized the mysterious man to be Burn which he realized that he was betrayed. The superior then ordered his men to bring Burn to him alive. Su promised that she will stop the investigation if the incident has nothing to do with the superior, but she must interrogate Burn first. The superior showed how sorry he was and promised to take responsibility and compensation for the attack at the guard post before. All of a sudden, they heard a loud bang from the ceiling. It was the wolf who looked badly injured and seemed like he was seeking revenge. The nightclub was terrorized all of a sudden, and the wolf's gang began to spread the flesh bomb in the area. All of them wanted to finish what they started, that they caused ruckus in the nightclub, and started to shoot their guns at the people. Sue and the rest immediately wore their mask to protect themselves from the poisonous smoke. She then immediately dashed to haunt the terrorists. Fortunately, police had arrived to rescue the people in the nightclub. Lin Chuan was being called to pull do his duty, but something was bothering him. He again felt the hot pressure in his head like the first time he encountered the flesh bomb. Lin Chuan was unsettled with the situation. But that wasn't only the problem that night. There was a woman with a pale skin being interrogated by a police officer. As she turned her head, the woman doesn't look human at all. Lin Chuan immediately noticed the suspicious woman. And by his guess, the woman was a blood elf. The blood elf then revealed herself from the crowd. Their panic intensified while hearing such distractive noise. Lin Chuan recognized the noise to be the blood elf's shriek that's part of their assets to innate. 
The blood elf's face turned into more monstrously. But she seemed like she was targeting something else. And Lin Chuan noticed that the blood elf was targeting Huan. Huan seemed to be out of reality. The blood elf dashes while Huan couldn't move his feet. Lin Chuan ran to save his colleague. Luckily, Lin Chuan was able to block the blood elf from attacking Huan. Lin Chuan felt how strong the blood elf was. But the blood elf scarily asserted her dominance due to her cravings for blood. The blood elf counterattacked, while Lin Chuan was having difficulties fighting off the blood elf. Lin Chuan called for Huan to help him since the blood elf was too strong. Unfortunately, Huan passed out. The elf blood then screamed as it was one of her abilities to distract their opponent. Lin Chuan decided to take matters on his own hand by using a silent splitting tooth dagger since Huan passed out. Until Su arrived at the scene. Lin Chuan felt a little relieved to see Su in the scene with him, yet he still needed to hold on. The elf blood counterattacked using her scream, and made both Huan and Lin Chuan fly away. The two of them stumbled on a hard surface, until Su came in, and kicked the elf blood on the face. With one hit, the elf blood was defeated by Su. The elf blood stumbled and passed out while Su instructed Lin Chuan to take care of Huan. But unfortunately, Lin Chuan couldn't move out of pain. He felt like it's possible to go back to the hospital even though he just got discharged. Then he examines Huan's state. Luckily, Huan finally woke up. Lin Chuan hoped for Huan to get up immediately since Huan woke up in such awkward position laying on Lin Chuan's crotch. Since Lin Chuan and Huan were injured, Mu Xiuangai and Mai Kang stepped in to give hands to Lin Chuan and Huan. Lin Chuan was limping as he felt all his broken bones while Huan threw up. But before they proceed to their next fight, Su made sure if any of her team was injured. Lin Chuan spoke up as if he wasn't hurt. He even bragged about his centroid force increase to level 5. Mu Xiuangai was irritated and jokingly told Mai Kang to just let Lin Chuan die due to his ego. They all felt disgusted as the officers confiscated a bunch of boxes filled with bombs that were from the flesh factory. While Lin Chuan and Huan were being assisted, Mu Xiuangai thought of asking Lin Chuan a favor to teach Mai Kang about the reflective blade technique. Lin Chuan accepted the favor, but he satisfies himself by teasing Mu Xiuangai that the payment for the training was already paid because of the breakup fee. Even though Mu Xiuangai was triggered by Lin Chuan's teasing, Lin Chuan had his reasons that the breakup fee would be a big help as soon as he returned to the hospital. Later that night, at the guard post, Su visited her team at their office to congratulate them about their operation being successful. She then insisted that everyone should order whatever they want as her treat. Su then looked at someone directly with a genuine smile on her face. Because of Su's beautiful stare, Lin Chuan became uneasy. He even wondered if he was the one that Su was looking at. Turns out, Su just wanted Lin Chuan to do the errand since he's a newbie. Mu Xiuangai and Mai Kang holds their laugh while Lin Chuan was triggered as he was used as a maid. But Su wasn't just a bossy leader. She even gave reward to her team by giving them a vacation to spend time with their loved ones. Lin Chuan's frowny face turned into joy as soon as he heard that they'll be going to an island sea. After a while, Su finished eating her food. And with her was Lin Chuan, Mai Kang, and Mu Xiuangai at the guard post director's office. Su summoned the three of them in her office for a meeting. Su's agenda was to create an investigation unit, and the first three members she chose was Lin Chuan and his friends. The fangirl, Mu Xiuangai listens carefully to every words that Su says, until Su called Mu Xiuangai. With one call, Mu Xiuangai who has been treated like a princess all through her life, served Su a cappuccino. As Su enjoys every sip of her coffee, she informed the three of them that the elf blood they have caught has died. But Su also thought of planning to use the flesh factory case as a distraction to society while they focused on their real investigation at the White Arrow Harbor. In Lin Chuan's mind, he was amazed with Su's intelligence. He even thought about Mai Kang and Mu Xiuangai being a great asset on Su's team. But importantly, Lin Chuan thought of how dangerous the investigation would be, yet he was dragged along with them. Even though Su was aware that the White Arrow Harbor case has been an unsolved mystery, she was still willing to give it a shot. Su then guided the three of them to the White Arrow Harbor Guard Post Archive. She then revealed that the reason why they were terrorized before was because of the data information that contains in the archive's room. Su was grateful that she and the rest of her team were able to solve the Flesh Factory case. In return, the higher-ups gave Su a privilege to create her own investigation unit to solve the most tragic and mysterious case. Su gave the three of them a warning about the case being classified. Su was willing to reveal the secrets of the case, but she hoped none of them would snitch or else they'll be punished by authority. Lin Chuan then acted like a wimp and asked Su if he could back out since the case was too serious, until Su handed a document to Lin Chuan. Like she trapped Lin Chuan for him to not leave since he already touched and saw a classified object. All Lin Chuan could do was cry since he was outsmarted by Su. 
All of a sudden, Sue ordered the three of them to study all of the documents to look for clues, and they aren't allowed to leave in the archives room with the document in their hands. But Lin Chuan was shocked to see Mai Kang and Lin Chuan leaving the room with Sue. Mu Xu and I revealed that the Mu family was already aware about the documents for years, and with that, Lin Chuan was the only one who needed to study all alone. Lin Chuan starts to frown and felt like he was being punished, until he opened the document and became intrigued with just a glance. Su looked back and smirked to Lin Chuan, and reminded him that the case was so intriguing, they made it a top secret. Lin Chuan who suddenly became interested stood up and gave respect to Su, he then promised that he'll never snitch a word to anyone about the case. Before Su walks away, she reminded Lin Chuan to delete the security footage of them stepping in the archives room. It led Lin Chuan a conclusion that he might be getting scammed. But something came up in Lin Chuan's mind. Su didn't hesitate to hear out Lin Chuan's request. Until Lin Chuan acted like a cute puppy asking Su if he could drink a tea while reading all the documents. The next day at the guard post, Lin Chuan stayed up all night studying all the documents. Mu Xu and I caught him taking a nap at the guard post office. Until Lin Chuan got startled by a plastic bag that Mu Xu and I threw in front of him. Mu Xu and I was a kind friend and brought Lin Chuan a breakfast, yet she still made a joke about telling Su that Lin Chuan's been slacking off. But Lin Chuan proudly told Mu Xu and I that he never got his eyes off the documents and that he was just done reading. While Lin Chuan prepared his meal, he told Mu Xu and I all the secrets he had learned starting with the first mayor of the White Arrow Harbor being an elf blood. Lin Chuan finds it disgusting when the first mayor stressed out the world and that many women of noble was played by the first mayor too. Lin Chuan also learned that the blood elves also stole from the Xingao Empire including the Mu family. Mu Xu and I was then curious about Lin Chuan's conclusion after he read all the documents, but Lin Chuan chose to finish his meals first. The two of them began to joke around again as usual, while Lin Chuan looked tired and his head being above reality. Mu Xu and I then revealed that the original seal that represented the Mu family patriarch's authority was lost which the seventh emperor of the Xingao Empire had personally signed. In short, Mu Xu and I's family was connected to the White Arrow Harbor's case. She even informed Lin Chuan that if ever they cracked the case, the Mu family might approve their relationship. But Lin Chuan was too busy munching his food. Mu Xu and I suddenly became awkward after she spoke about her relationship with Lin Chuan. While Lin Chuan's first thought was that the Wellington statue in the White Arrow Harbor looked like an awkward uncle. Their conversation changed into the appearance of the statue while Mai Kang had arrived at the office. Meanwhile, at the White Arrow Harbor's residential area, there was a peaceful family getting ready to start their day. Until the clock dings and a flesh bomb barged in their home. The father seemed to be not himself as he was being called by her daughter. The little girl began to be worried for her parents. But both of her parents seemed to be possessed because of the flesh bomb. The little girl began to cry out of being terrified at the sudden situation. Turns out, their family was controlled by an elf blood. The elf blood felt jolly to see the effects of the smokes were visible in the naked eye. The school bus then arrived. The elf blood was named Lady Chamar. She then ordered the parents to tell the school bus driver that the little girl had slept and will be sent at school later on. The father was completely not in control of himself. Even though he was being controlled, he still looked like a normal human being and did what Chamara told him to do. The bus driver immediately bought what the father said. But the real reason why Chamora went after the peaceful family was that because they are the hidden blood successors developed Wellington's method. And because of that, the family could transition into a regular human to blood successors freely. Chamora became so triggered when her ally brought up Wellington's name. Because of their past when Wellington didn't hand her the methods that led to chaos and made the elf blood terrorize the civilians. The little girl was also possessed and caught Chamora's eyes. She then carried the little girl while looking at her as she was planning to do something malicious. Chamora licked her lips and bit the neck of the child out of her will. While Chamora was enjoying the blood of the child, she was warned by her ally that the child might turn into a true successor if she drinks the blood further. Chamora dropped the child and kept cursing at Wellington about her furiousness on being not able to find the methods. Chamora's underlings also became furious to support her emotions. The Chamora's ally that looked like a hologram asked her about why does she always pick humans with exceptional looks to become a blood successor. Chamora then responded to her ally which she addresses as Professor F. Chamora believed that she was just satisfying her appetite. Professor F then cuts to the chase to talk about his business with Chamora. Professor F wishes for Chamora to raise the price at 50% in their business. While Chamora thought of Professor F might be taking advantage of the situation. But Professor F just went with his principles about his organization always keeping their words. Professor F finds it immoral for Chamora to hide the fact about Wellington's methods. Chamora apologized for hiding the facts about the methods. 
but she thought it would be appropriate to increase their business by another 50%. The professor then made a deal that he could lower the price as long as Chamura could answer his question truth. Professor F asked Chamura about the items that was in the Guardian airship which the airship was shot down. Chamura assures that the airship being shot at wasn't the elf blood's doing, but it was more connected with the Zingao Empire. The tables have turned when Chamura puts Professor F in a pressuring situation and asked him what could he be interested in among the items in the airship. Professor F just gave Chamura a clue, that there are some things that could not be obtained even if an individual wishes to obtain it. Chamura then felt a little uncomfortable around Professor F. But despite the weird existence of Professor F, Chamora had no choice but to make deal with him since she has an agenda from the Flesh Factory. Until Chamora remembered about the malicious plans they made, Chamora and her underlings were all looking forward to bathe the White Arrow Harbor with blood. Meanwhile, on the guard post side, Su and Lin Chuan was taking a stroll in Su's car. Lin Chuan felt uncomfortable with how fast Su drove, while Mu Xuing I looked chill. Same goes to Mai Kang. Lin Chuan felt something unusual as they passed the residential area. He then remembered that he felt the same thing whenever they faced a threat. Lin Chuan followed his intuitions and marked red on the places he felt like he must stay away from. Afterwards, Lin Chuan decided to relax since they were on a vacation. Lin Chuan looked on the other side, like visualizing the sun, beach, and beauties in bikinis. Until Mu Xuingai's centroid force alerted her. Mu Xuingai informed her friends that there has been a breaking news from Zingao. Based on the news, the reports were about Jing Kijing who was famous for being a plume fanboy. Jing gave an outstanding performance in the entrance exam that he was now at accomplished level proficiency. While Lin Chuan was reading the news, Jing gave him a private message as his gratitude, but Lin Chuan seemed to be annoyed by Jing being too cheesy. But as soon as Lin Chuan opened the message, he was in shock. Based on the message, Lin Chuan was offered to buy his training methods by the Jing family, military, and the police department. Lin Chuan couldn't believe he got another opportunity to get rich. Lin Chuan thought how generous for Jing to package his training methods that gave him an opportunity to gain more money. Mu Xuing I became curious about Jing idolizing Plume so much, she wondered what level of strength Plume has. Lin Chuan began to act a bit arrogant when he realized Mu Xuing I was interested in Plume's abilities and strengths. Lin Chuan told a brief background of Plume when Plume broke through to Centroid Force Stage 4 and became an expert. Because of Lin Chuan's story, Mu Xuingai lost her poised as soon as she became intrigued. And for Mai Kang, he wishes to spar with Plume again if ever he meets him. Su joined their conversation. But it became dark when Su has a theory that Plume might have been already dead. But Su just assumed Plume might be dead because of his mysterious disappearance. Based on Su's conspiracy theory, she thought Plume might have already been assassinated by the Empire due to his intimidating presence that has the same personality to Professor F. Mu Xuingai also admired the intelligence of Professor F. Based on her knowledge, Professor F. did not only fall into self-depreciation and enter the Flesh Factory, Professor F. also became the leader of the Flesh Factory's third group. And based on Lin Chuan's knowledge, there were three geniuses that was known and Professor F. was one of it. But he was curious about the last genius. But the whereabouts of the last genius was a mystery of them all. After their road trip, they began to play volleyball on the beach. Even Su participated in the fun. But Mu Xuingai was defeated in volleyball. Su and Mu Xuingai enjoyed their vacation and hoped for Mai Kang and Lin Chuan to join them. But Mai Kang was busy working out. Lin Chuan then decided to ditch Mai Kang to enjoy his vacation. Until he got a call from his centroid force. It was Lin Chuan's old friend. The two of them kept in touch to inform about their life in training camps. Lin Chuan was about to hang up the call, but Mu Xuingai interfered their conversation. Lin Chuan's old friend became a bit jealous to see Lin Chuan living his life for a moment especially there was a hot woman beside. Lin Chuan's old friend made a tantrum so that Lin Chuan didn't introduce to many of Lin Chuan's hot female friends. Until Lin Chuan hangs up the call out of being irritated. Lin Chuan live to the fullest. He loves the fact that he's in the beach embracing the sun and two beautiful women in bikinis inviting him to play. But just when Lin Chuan was enjoying his life, Su dragged him to go to work again. Lin had tears in his eyes that he lived in his fantasy for only a short time. Until Su revealed that she brought the three of them together in the beach not to have a fun vacation because of the fact that Wellington used to live on the beach they were at. Lai Kang and Mu Xuingai listens for Su's next instructions, while Lin Chuan was still grieving that he wasn't actually on a vacation at all. Moments later, the four of them went to an old-fashioned house. While they gaze at Wellington's home, they thought of how smart Wellington was to hide all the treasure he has that the elf blood was dying to find. Sue wanted to investigate Wellington's diary to see where all the treasures were hidden in the White Arrow Harbor. 
As they entered the place, they were mesmerized by the structures and interior design of Wellington's home. While they investigate the place, Lin Chuen thought that nothing was interesting to be found. Until Lin Chuen saw a huge doorway with a flower design on it made up with real golds. Lin Chuen could sense there was something suspicious on the flowers. He noticed the artifacts being too thin and also glows in the dark. Lin Chuen then looked through the gold flower petals. Then he became excited like a child. While Su felt like she's losing her patience. Su thought Lin Chuen was wasting his time looking at the beach while being silly by looking through the gold petal. But Lin Chuen actually just found something and couldn't explain due to him being too much excited. Lin Chuen then pointed at the city. Su did the same thing by looking through the gold petal. And through the gold petal, there was a spotlight pointing at a specific location at the city. On that spotlight, it showed all the women that Wellington had left. Su suspected Lin Chuen for finding such incredible artifact. But Lin Chuen was just trying to discover things like he was ordered to. Su finds it interesting that no one has ever discovered the gold petals throughout the years. Yet, Lin Chuen was the only one who accidentally found such interesting thing. Lin Chuen was so fluttered that he began to explain C gibberish. But Su got everything wrong and thought Lin Chuen was insulting their intelligence. Su looked back to make sure if that's what Lin Chuen meant. Lin Chuen was so pressured by Su's scary aura that he wanted to go home instead. All Lin Chuen could say at that moment was to describe Su as a brilliant leader for him to not get in trouble. But Su finds it funny to see Lin Chuen being scared. Su let down her scary ore and decided to let Lin Chuen off the hook. She even offered him a one-month paid vacation because of him discovering such important artifact. The next day at the White Arrow Harbor Guard Post Director's office, Su began to slam her desk. She was furious while her desk was completely destroyed. Mu Xu and I tried to give Su a hot water for her to calm down, but they don't have any idea why Su was mad that morning. Su told her team that she went to the address where the gold petals led her, but the owner of the building didn't allow their team to enter. The owner of the building instead gave Sue a document leading to Wellington's treasure, but in the end, Sue found out that the treasures they found was not Wellington's belongings, but the owner's. Mu Xu and I then revealed the owner's name to be Donald Benson who is a powerful figure in Leller County. Lin Chuen then spoke up, as he was familiarized with Donald. Sue noticed that Lin Chuen seemed to have knowledge about Donald, until Lin Chuen remembered that he was gifted a dagger by helping the Ryan family. In return he got a dagger from Donald Benson. The next day, the three of them arrived at the mansion. As they opened the car, a bunch of butlers gave them a welcoming presence. Lin Chuen, Mu Xu and I, and Mai Kang dressed formally to meet Donald at his mansion. The butler insisted for them to look around the place, but they must be respectful and should return an item if ever they saw it laying around. After the butlers walked away, Lin Chuen thought of a plan for the three of them to split up. Lin Chuen felt confident, since he has an ability to sense danger in an early state. But after a while, Lin Chuen felt like his soul was being sucked out of him for finding completely nothing at all. Same goes for Mu Xu and I and Mai Kang who has been strolling around with Lin Chuen. The disappointment on their faces was shown as they realized that the Wellington treasures might have been hidden already as soon as the mansion heard the three of them will pay a visit and search. While the three of them kept whining, they aren't aware that what they were looking for was behind them all along. Lin Chuen began to mourn for his one-month paid vacation whom he thought he'll never get. Until Lin Chuen felt something tingling in his senses. He looked at the fountain and felt something strange that the appearance looked distorted. Lin Chuen immediately ran towards the fountain which made Mu Xu and I and Mai Kang alerted. Until Lin Chuen slipped out of excitement and bashed his head on the edge of the fountain. Mu Xu and I and Mai Kang felt a second-hand embarrassment for Lin Chuen being clumsy. Lin Chuen immediately got up while his friends were still concerned for his recklessness. Until they saw something unusual on the fountain a color red ball on the demolished part. The three of them investigates the red ball and recognized it as the Wellington's magic. The glass that protects the ball slowly cracks until the ball was free from the trap. As soon as the ball lack, a Wellington's magic got out. The three of them felt the intense aura and how powerful the ball. Lin Chuen was even aware that the ball has the ability to hide a strong blood aura. But out of the three of them, Lin Chuen was more intrigued. When he saw the resemblance of the Wellington's magic to be the stone ball he encountered before, the next day at the guard post, the team was analyzing the items they had retrieved, but four of it was damaged. Sue held the Wellington's magic and was certain that the treasures doesn't belong to the Mu family. In Mu Xu and I's case, she still wanted to know where Wellington hid her family bloodline seal. Sue was grateful to have Lin Chu and his friends to be in her team. Since the past few days, they had made quite great progress in the investigation. Sue promised that as soon as she get promoted, she will treat her team the best thing they deserve, but importantly, she gave credits to Lin Chuen for giving the best contribution. But for Lin Chuen, 
he first wanted to know how would their team handle the items. Lin Chuan then made a suggestion to sell the items especially the red ball since it was crafted like how the blood elves would store their property. But based on Su's investigation, the ball was just an ordinary item, but still could be sold since it was an antique and belonged to a famous person. Lin Chuan took the ball immediately while Mai Kang and Mu Xiuang I gave him an eye roll for being greedy again. Later that night at the guard post dormitories, Lin Chuan conducted an experiment to the red ball. He had observed that the ball was quite strange, and no electric current flowing into it. Lin Chuan has been examining the item all night, but nothing suspicious happened to Versants. He then thought that the item might be just an ordinary item after all. But since Lin Chuan was getting nowhere with the ball, he then tossed it and went along with another project which he will complete a blueprint commission and become a mechanic. And two hours later, Lin Chuan was finally done. Lin Chuan called his project as tracking and surveillance device, white number one. With Lin Chuan's handmade device, it will prevent him from trouble. However, Lin Chuan must perform an experiment to his invention first by going out in the city, a place where Lin Chuan felt the searing pain in his head. He then went for a walk at the Northern Red Light District to look around for a nearby black market. Lin Chuan went and sat on the bar. He wore a clothing that will hide some of his features and asked the bartender if he's going for a bounty. The bartender whispered back and told Lin Chuan to pick any mission he wishes to do. And all of a sudden, Mu Xiuang I appeared and asked the bartender to extend her time in her mission. Lin Chuan wondered why would someone like Mu Xiuang I be doing in such minor savage place. While Lin Chuan hides his identity, Mu Xiuang I on his side kept complaining about how hard the mission was. The bartender then threatened Mu Xiuang I that if she didn't complete her mission, she must strip down her clothes and run through the main entrance. Mu Xiuang I was deeply flustered with the most daring punishment. She started to panic since she couldn't finish her mission while Lin Chuan acted so suspicious by hiding his identity. Until Mu Xiuangai approached him behind his back, and pulled his hoodie to reveal his identity. Mu Xiuangai then confessed that she must go through such daring missions in order to get higher score. She then wondered why would Lin Chuan go to a place like he whereabouts since Lin Chuan already got enough high score. But then Mu Xiuangai came up with an idea. Mu Xiuangai acted innocent, and cutesy around Lin Chuan for him to help Mu Xiuangai with her mission. Lin Chuan declined until Mu Xiuang I pulled her gold card which Lin Chuan will be irresistible. And with that, Lin Chuan immediately accepted and helped Mu Xiuang I with her mission. Before they carry on with the mission, Mu Xiuang I gave Lin Chuan a delicious meal, and it seemed like Lin Chuan was fully satisfied. But Mu Xiuang I really doesn't want to play around since her mission has a time limit. Mu Xiuang I then told Lin Chuan a brief background about her mission, that she was targeting a rapist who's at level 5, but the suspect was also an expert in concealment and was seen on the northern block a few days before. Mu Xiuangai was already being tempered, while Lin Chuan decided to have a desert instead of searching for the target. Until Mu Xiuangai cried out loud and accused Lin Chuan for making her fail on purpose, the two of them became the center of attraction. Lin Chuan felt embarrassed and finally empathized with Mu Xiuangai. He then comforts Mu Xiuangai by telling her that he has his own ways. He then pulled out his device that he made earlier. Mu Xiuangai underestimated the device since she already saw it somewhere on the market until the device was activated and spoke. The point of view of the device was directly pointing at Mu Xiuangai's breast. Lin Chuan started to blush as he saw where the device was pointing at, which was Mu Xiuangai's breast. After Lin Chuan accidentally took a peek on Mu Xiuangai's breast, he took the device and told Mu Xiuangai to not play around with the device. He then puts the device on the roll and showed Mu Xiuangai how useful it was. As they carried on with the mission, Mu Xiuangai proposed a bet that if Lin Chuan loses, he must Mu Xiuangai deal with the people in the store. And also, Lin Chuan must buy Mu Xiuangai a meal. Lin Chuan laughed at Mu Xiuangai's confidence. But not even an hour had passed, yet the device already tracked down the target. Lin Chuan saw a red dot with a high level on his data. While Mu Xiuangai on the side assumed she'll be able to make Lin Chuan open his wallet. All of a sudden, Lin Chuan was surprised. When his device ran into a people fornicating with each other, Mu Xiuangai became curious, but Lin Chuan refused to let Mu Xiuangai see something sexually graphic. Another interruption had occurred when the device stopped moving. Lin Chuan couldn't figure it out what could be the cause. Turns out, his device was being molested by a real rat. Good thing, Lin Chuan's device managed to kill the real rat by THR device's pointy tail. Lin Chuan was so traumatized by witnessing a bunch of impurities. Mu Xiuangai started to become concerned, while Lin Chuan still refuses to let Mu witness what he just saw. Mu Xiuangai felt suspicious towards Lin Chuan and thought her friend must be hiding something from her. But then Lin Chuan wondered why was no one keeping an eye out for Mu Xiuangai who's a noble person. Mu Xiuangai started to open up that a friend of hers helped her out by making a replica of herself. In the middle of Mu Xiuangai's storytelling, 
Lin Chuan all of a sudden found the target. Lin Chuan was joyously running away as he was successful. He then reminded Mu Xuengai that he'd be back in an hour. Mu Xuengai said bad word towards Lin Chuan, but deep down she was grateful for him. Half an hour later, Mu Xuengai bought some food, until Lin Chuan arrived with the target on his hands. The suspect even had the guts to threaten that he'll terrorize the White Arrow Harbor. Lin Chuan smacked the suspect's head on the table for speaking ill. While Lin Chuan mutinously bashes the suspect's head on the counter, he wondered what could be more malicious things a bad people would do. Mu Xuengai assures to Lin Chuan that a three-star thief won't be able to do further and major crimes. Mu Xuengai decided to walk out and told Lin Chuan that she already paid the fee for helping her. Later that night, the two of them walked on their way to their dormitories. Until Mu Xuengai spotted a poor little girl. The little girl stepped forward slowly. Turns out, Mu Xuengai just wanted to give her some food. The little girl felt all the joy in the world. Mu Xuengai even offered the little girl some silver money, but Lin Chuan stopped her. Instead, Lin Chuan gave the little girl a bronze coin. The little girl was still grateful. The little girl ran away while carrying her delicious food to her home. In Lin Chuan's defense, the reason why he stopped Mu Xuengai from giving the little girl too much was for the sake of the little girl. Lin Chuan believed that the little girl might get killed for carrying such privileged food and money before she even got home. Mu Xuengai actually thought that Lin Chuan made sense and felt bad. Because of Lin Chuan's lecture, Mu Xuengai remembered the time when she was scolded by her grandfather by giving a beggar some gold coins. The little Mu Xuengai was heartbroken and thought her grandfather was heartless for not letting her be kind to the less privileged. Her grandfather understood her, but the grandfather believed that Mu Xuengai at that time was too young to understand how the system in the world works. Until Mu Xuengai's grandfather passed away, and she still got her grandfather's words marked on her. Later that night, back to the dormitories. The malicious words of the suspect kept Lin Chuan up all night as if it was haunting him. But Lin Chuan was more worried when Mu Xuengai started to cry when they parted their ways. But then Lin Chuan remembered Chamberlain which he made a deal by staying away from Mu Xuengai. Lin Chuan then decided to check his data statistics to self reflect all the grinds and hustle he had done. In his statistics, it revealed that he was plume. He even became a high-grade mechanical repairman, with a centroid points of 246. But Lin Chuan still wasn't satisfied and thought of enhancing his skills more by learning tons of methods and trainings. Lin Chuan even searched for posts in the centroid net to give him tips and ideas with his next training. Until a man had Lin Chuan's interest, Lin Chuan stalked the man's profile who was Gong Guanyang, team leader of the Third Mechanic Association's group. Lin Chuan was amazed that for someone like Guanyang, who was a 25-year-old man could be a team leader. Lin Chuan thought about learning from Guanyang to improve his latest device which was the white number one. After a while, Lin Chuan felt so lucky after interacting with Guanyang. Lin Chuan celebrated that Ji was able to hide his identity and initiate the mechanics with Guanyang. Lin Chuan even got a materials for reconstructing his mice device. Until Lin Chuan received a notification. It was a message from Guanyang praising him for being so talented at a young age. Lin Chuan was even invited to be part of Guanyang's team. Lin Chuan had no choice but to turn down the offer since he must act cautiously and believe that he was still too weak. Afterwards, Lin Chuan decided to go for a training since he already finished some work. He clicked his centroid bracelet and was immediately transported to the centroid battle net. In Lin Chuan's physical appearance, he looked like he was meditating. His body starts to glow as he trained, until two triangular symbol appeared on his forehead and chest. Lin Chuan seemed to be doing well on his training. While he was busy, the red ball that he got from the investigation also started to glow. The red ball seemed to wish to release something from the insides, until the ball cracked. Meanwhile, at the Lyre County Haimu prison, Chamora appeared and was able to break into the prison that was known to be highly secured. Chamora felt pleasured to think about the citizens of the White Arrow Harbor might flip out if they found out that someone like Chamora could easily break in. Chamora controlled all the guards like a puppet who turned out to be also a hidden blood successors. One of the guard approached a giant gate to open it. The guard who completely out of his control guides Chamora to the prison cell. The guard immediately opened the door. While Chamora was ready to spread her villainous aura, Chamora and her underlings stepped in and went for a tour. She was excited to do the next step of her villainous plan. By freeing all the prisoners. And beside Chamora was the wolf who Lin Chuan defeated before. Chamora even offered to give rewards on the prisoners as long as they all followed and help her out. Chamora yelled and ordered every prisoner to annihilate the guards of the White Arrow Harbor. Everyone cheered as they all held a grudge against the guards of the White Arrow Harbor. Chamora began to laugh hysterically. The next day at Lin Chuan's residence, it was already in the morning and Lin Chuan was still training. He already had a dark under eyes, 
but he was cool about it since he already reached a level 6 centroid force stage. But to his surprise, he saw the red ball to be sliced in half. But then Lin Chuan squints his eyes to assure what he just saw. Inside the ball, there was a cute small animal. But Lin Chuan thought it was lame to see a cat in the ball. Afterwards, Lin Chuan called Su for a favor of him leaving for two days to take a rest. Lin Chuan felt irritated that his centroid force broke through which became easily noticeable and would be harder to deal with for Lin Chuan. Lin Chuan tested the cat and it was recognized as a normal blue ragdoll cat. Since Lin Chuan had lack of sleep, he became furious that the test results showed that the cat was just normal. Mu Xuangai then texted Lin Chuan for being worried that he must be really sick. Lin Chuan panicked all of a sudden. Lin Chuan moved in an instant to hide the cat from Mu Xuangai. While Mu Xuangai on the outside of his room was looking pleasant with a gift on her hand, Lin Chuan opened girl opened the door all dressed up and sweaty. While Mu Xuangai looked deeply worried. But Mu Xuangai felt a little disrespected when Lin Chuan was blocking the door that made Mu Xuangai felt unwelcome. Lin Chuan was a bit embarrassed when his place was a bit messy. But in Mu Xuangai's point of view, the place was neat and clean. Lin Chuan was flattered for receiving a praise about his place. Mu Xuangai handed Lin Chuan a greetings gift, but Mu Xuangai was actually aware that Lin Chuan was just pretending to be sick. Lin Chuan suddenly became awkward around Mu Xuangai for being exposed, until the cat had caught Mu Xuangai's eyes. Mu Xuangai couldn't resist the cuteness of the cat. The cat felt like it was about to be attacked by love and hugs. Mu Xuangai immediately picked the cat up and admired it by hugging the cat so tightly. Mu Xuangai couldn't stop clinging on the cat as she wondered why would Lin Chuan own one since he doesn't seem to be a cat person. Lin Chuan then made up a story and acted all heroic and told Mu Xuangai that he just found the poor cat on the streets and thought of bringing it home. But Mu Xuangai seemed like she doesn't believe Lin Chuan. Mu Xuangai thought of adopting the cat and made the cat be terrified of her. The cat smacked Mu Xuangai's face and escaped from her arms. But Mu Xuangai didn't care that she was hit. She even decided to chase the cat around. The cat started to shiver and was cornered by Mu Xuangai until Lin Chuan stopped her. Mu Xuangai was deeply disappointed that she was interrupted from clinging on the cat. Lin Chuan advises Mu Xuangai to go home due to the typhoon that might happen. Mu Xuangai began to cry when she was separated from the cat. Lin Chuan then thought of acting too cautious especially with the cat. Later that night, there was a truck running for errands. The drivers saw something off in front of them. But it was just traffic officers blocking the highway for the safety of the citizens due to the hurricane that will occur. But the truck seemed like it doesn't want to stop. The truck driver was yelling gibberish until he hits the traffic officers in front of him. The steering wheel was out of control and the guards all panicked that they have make a report in an instant. Another chaos occurred when a blood elf appeared on top of the truck. The blood elf opened the roof of the truck and was bloodthirsty for the driver. The driver screamed disturbingly for being brutally murdered by the blood elf. But not only the blood elf went to terrorize the night, it appears that the rest of Chamorro's subordinates arrived at the scene and they were all prepared to commit treason on the city. Meanwhile at the guard post, Su immediately received that bad news that prisoners from the Haimu prison broke out. Su was furious with the major urgency that might put the majority of the civilians in such dangerous position. After receiving the bad news, Su immediately made an announcement for her unit to respond quickly. Lin Chuan was startled since he was just getting to know his cat. After the announcement, the officers went to lurk at the forest bordering White Arrow Harbor. All of the officers were active on their duty. Lin Chuan knew the situation might be severely troublesome since he was dragged out to work even though he was on leave. Luckily for Lin Chuan, he made a copy of his device white number one that will scout his team quickly. Lin Chuan brought his devices with him as a support. It was very useful for him, especially when he suddenly found one of the prisoners named Gua number six. Lin Chuan wondered how the prisoners broke out so easily. Lin Chuan immediately reported his findings on instructor Carrie until he found another interesting target. Carrie was weirded out, but based on Lin Chuan's data, the targets were so many than he expected. Lin Chuan started to panic as he analyzes his data only to find out that their opponents are going after him. Multiple enemies were seen getting closer to Lin Chuan's whereabouts. Due to urgency, Lin Chuan immediately reported to instructor Carrie. Carrie instantly thought of a plan and called for his team's attention to prepare their defense. The team was on their formation, while Carrie suddenly thought of how advanced Lin Chuan was to detect the enemies nearby. Carrie asked the other officers about the enemies nearby, but unfortunately their detectors were unreliable. Until Lin Chuan spoke up and reported that the enemies were moving rapidly and ready for combat. Lin Chuan kept observing his data, and Cal confirmed that the enemies were closer, yet he couldn't figure out why his subordinates' detectors weren't working. All of a sudden, the enemies appeared in attack. 
The officers didn't hesitate to pull the trigger against their opponents. Some bullets were lucky enough to severely scathe some enemy. But some officers was unlucky when they got caught by one of the enemies. The wolf opened his wide mouth. With no second thought, the wolf horrendously bit the officer with blood horrifyingly splashing on his face. Even though it was too late to save their comrade, the officers instantly shot the wolf. While Lin Chuan mutinously pulled the trigger, he thought of how insane the enemies were. While Carrie who single-handedly fought of three enemies at once, warned his team to be more cautious since the enemies were no ordinary. Carrie already got too much in his hands, until one of the opponents sneaks in, and threw a bomb on Carrie's spot. Carrie instantly felt the suspicion behind him, and immediately recognized that it was a grenade. As the bomb explodes, Carrie tried to defend himself while observing the situation. Carrie realized that the grenade was an illuminant bomb. He yelled at everyone to instantly hide. But their crisis didn't stop there when one of the officers were shot in the head by a mysterious sniper. Almost four officers were down, while Kerry desperately hoped for his team to survive. The officers were slowly subtracting. Everyone wasn't even protected by their high-technology shields. It was a tragic event for Kerry to witness his team getting their lives taken away in front of him. But he won't stop yelling, and hoped for everyone to not get killed. Another illuminant bomb was thrown. But good thing, Lin Chuan made a perfect shot to destroy the bomb. Still, Lin Chuan felt the pressure of the battle. He kept himself quiet, as he realized there was two snipers with such military-class weapons that made their high-technology shields be ineffective. Lin Chuan also felt bad for his subordinates with detectors that didn't help them at all. Luckily Lin Chuan has white number one. He began to cry with the situation's difficulty. Lin Chuan couldn't even think of any theories why the jailbreakers got such high upgraded weapons. Carrie was deeply disappointed with himself, yet he still stood as a great leader and even praised Lin Chuan with his performance. Carrie did a headcount of his remaining team who was alive, and those few members were Lin Chuan, Fang, Zhang Lei, and Lu Kai. Even with scars all over Carrie's body and a deep dismayed emotion, he hoped for his team to hold on for a while until their backups arrived. Lin Chuan again checked his analytics and had observed that another batch of enemies were nearby. He immediately reported it to Kerry. Kerry was so infuriated that the crisis hasn't stopped. The enemies kept terrorizing the forest with bombs and guns. Officers didn't hesitate to pull the trigger, but some enemies were just too strong. Even their weapons are ineffective against some of their abnormal form enemies. As they all individual deals with their opponents, Lin Chuan advises them to destroy the illuminate bomb. Kerry made a headcount of his team who was remaining alive. He mentioned everyone but tragically, no one responded. But only Lin Chu and Fangyi who was seemed to be alive on that scene. Fangyi grieves for his comrades as Carrie informed the two of them that they are the only one who's alive. Scars were all over on Lin Chuan's face. He was all drained out but then he finally located the snipers. Through Lin Chuan's night vision goggles, he spotted a sniper on 200 meters away on top of the tree with dozens of enemies protecting them. The three of them carefully made a plan since they are the only hope to win the impossible battle. But for Lin Chuan, he was willing for his remaining team to take a risk and take initiatives by dealing with the snipers first. Carrie then objects, he thinks the plan would be better if him and Fang Yi are the ones who will distract the snipers for Lin Chuan to make a move. In Carrie's defense, it would be better if Lin Chuan was the one who would pull the trigger since the snipers aren't aware that they have been located by Lin Chuan. Lin Chuan was deeply touched when Carrie ordered him to escape and stay alive if ever the plan failed since he was just a student. Kerry was ashamed when he dragged Lin Chuan on such dangerous mission, and even witnessed multiple officers died. Lin Chuan felt for Kerry and promised he won't do such reckless activity. Kerry did a countdown before they dashed to distract the snipers. He then made a cue for Fang Yi to run along with him. Meanwhile, on the sniper's side, the sniper was enjoying his moment and thought of how weak the officers were, until he saw on his side that Fang Yi and Kerry was running together towards him. The sniper had a brief laugh as he believed that death awaits for Carrie and Fang. As Carrie dashed, he was so fortunate that the sniper missed his shot. Luckily, there were too many trees and made the sniper had a difficult time to aim. The sniper then ordered the rest to slow down Carrie and his team. But little do they know, Lin Chuan already sneaked behind them. The sniper was enjoying his moments and thought he was having the best time of his life by making everyone miserable and free upgraded weapons. Until he felt something unusual behit him. It was Lin Chuan. He raised his weapon with no remorse and slashed against the sniper. The sniper fell from the tree with Lin Chuan who knew had all the guts to finish him off. Lin Chuan pulled his dagger and stabbed the life out of the sniper with no emotions, but vengeance. Lin Chuan looked directly at the sniper and compromised that he'll be the one to send the sniper on another world for him to have a nice time. The sniper kept losing a lot of blood as he felt the pain from Lin Chuan's dagger. 
But then the sniper thought of holding Lin Chu in captive despite being badly injured. Lin Chu in panicked since he'll be done once he got caught by the enemies. The sniper laughed hysterically since he won't allow anyone to win against him. Until a gunshot was heard that night. Lin Chuan closes his eyes to avoid witnessing his terrible fate. But as he opened his eyes, he saw the sniper being lifeless. He then heard someone approaching him. Lin Chuan saw a long-haired woman in a dark shadow pulled the trigger and aimed perfectly at the sniper's head. Lin Chuan then opened his eyes, and the first thing he saw was his team leader Su with Fangy on the side being grateful that he was alive. They were all relieved to see Su's presence, but then they were left behind and ordered to clean up since Su was also needed somewhere in the area. Somewhere in the same area, there were officers chasing the criminals with their vehicle. The enemies seemed to be aware that they are almost getting caught and thought of slowing the officer's car down. On back of the jailbreaker's car, they threw a bunch of oils. Then they pulled their riffles and shoots the oils. A big explosion occurred in the middle of the road. The jailbreakers successfully got away with their schemes, while the officers got left behind. But then the officer's vehicle was still able to catch up with the jailbreak, and the chase continued on the bridge. Meanwhile, a tiger-looking creature was infuriated to think about the post guards and wished to annihilate every officer on his sight. And on top of him, a malicious woman Chamora seemed to plan something villainously. Chamora informed the tiger that she already set up her plans to bring down the guards. And if ever the tiger ruined Chamora's plan, she threatened the tiger to end him instead. Meanwhile on the road, it was Su and Lin Chuan who was chasing the jailbreakers all along. Lin Chuan tried his best to drive as fast as he can, until they finally caught up with the jailbreakers. The jailbreakers pulled their rifles, but Su immediately responds and pulled her crossbow. As she shoots the arrow from an upward aim, the man holding the rifle was instantly shot on the chest. While the criminals were briefly distracted by their fallen ally, Su shot the back wheels of the jailbreaker's vehicle. Su then instructed Lin Chuan to drive in front of the criminal's car to block their way. Su then jumped across their opponent's car. As she jumped across, one of the enemies pulled their gun. While Lin Chuan was able to be in front of their opponent's car. But Lin Chuan still drove cautiously. While their opponent's vehicle was losing tight balance. Their opponent's vehicle crashed, while Lin Chuan was unscathed. But for Chamor, the timing was just right for her plan. All of a sudden, a demonic symbol appeared on the road. Lin Chuan stepped out of the car as he felt the suspicious spell of Chamor. Su then jumped out while her body was glowing red. She started to lose control of herself, yet she was fighting to keep her conscious. Lin Chuan knew something was wrong with Su, until Su horrifyingly screamed as she was being controlled by Chamor. Lin Chuan has no idea and wondered why he was the only one not affected by the spell. The jailbreakers felt relieved that they just lost a strong opponent which was Su. The enemies even thought of doing such malicious things since they were at an advantage. While Lin Chuan tried his best to protect Su who was not feeling okay with herself, Su could already tell she's losing it and advises Lin Chuan to get away immediately. But then Lin Chuan touched Su's hand. As he held Su, Su was purified from the spell all of a sudden. But Lin Chuan wasn't aware of his new ability. As soon as he lost touch with Su, Su became uncontrollable with herself again. Lin Chuan was deeply worried for Su's state becoming worse, until Su had an idea and held Lin Chuan with such dominance grip and suddenly, she was okay again. Lin Chuan felt so awkward but then he was ordered to shut his mouth. Su glared at the criminals and warned them that if ever they resist, she looked at them with full anger in her eyes and promised she'll bring justice on the spot. In the middle of the bridge, Chamora's spell was the center of attention. The enemies were all still confident despite Su not being fully affected by Chamora's spell. Su with no second thoughts dashed against the enemies while holding Lin Chuan's hand, while the green-colored guy stepped forward and instantly counterattacked Su. But Su immediately dodged while not losing a grip on Lin Chuan's hand. The green guy lets his guard down. When he saw Su beneath him, Su then kicked the guy on his ribs. Su made a second kick and made the green guy stumbled away. The enemies felt that Su was overpowered with her skills that it provoked them to use their riffle. Su swung Lin Chuan to move in front of her. Lin Chuan panicked and thought he was about to be a human shield, but then Su ordered him to use his shield. Lin Chuan instantly summoned his shield while Su held on to him. Su then gave him a heads up to brace himself. The two of them dashes against the enemies while bullets were firing directly at them. All of a sudden, Su did a body flip and held on to Lin Chuan's bulletproof vest. Lin Chuan realized that Su's intention was actually to use him as a weapon. The enemies were all stumbled as soon as Su threw Lin Chuan with a horrified look on his face, until Su summoned her own weapon and threw against the opponents. The green guy was severely stabbed by Su's weapon. The blood elves then made a screeching sound by screaming against Su and Lin Chuan. The scream was intensified as Lin Chuan and Su approaches. 
while Sue immediately summoned another weapon of hers to defend themselves from the blood elves' shriek. Sue then pulled Lin Chuan away to protect him. But as soon as the blood elves' shriek reached Sue, she wasn't fully affected. Sue realized that it might be Lin Chuan's doing even though he wasn't fully aware of his newly ability. The blood elves continued shrieking, while Sue thought of another battle method. She then jumped while holding her weapon in Lin Chuan's hand. The blood elves were infuriated that their shrieking abilities wasn't effective, while Sue had full anger in her soul. As Sue swung her weapon, a large flame appeared and injured the two blood elves. While Lin Chuan who served as Sue's support was deeply mesmerized by how overpowered and skilled Sue was. The two of them survived and not even a single injury was shown on their appearance. Luckily, Chamora's spell slowly fades away. Lin Chuan was in tears of joy as he felt the sinister feeling slowly goes away. Sue then checks up on Lin Chuan who was flabbergasted throughout the battle, but then she wondered how come Lin Chuan wasn't affected by Chamora's spell. Until Sue realized something. She saw herself still holding Lin Chuan's hand. Sue felt disgusted that she instantly threw Lin Chuan on the ground. Even though the fight was over, Sue decided to take the victory as their time to investigate the enemy's corpse to find more clues. But then Lin Chuan reminded Sue about the number of blood elves being concealed in the woods. Based on Lin Chuan's intuition, he felt like there are still blood elves in the woods who's been observing them. Turns out, Lin Chuan was correct and Sue realized that there might be another trap on their way. The tiger curses against the blood elves' existence for being defeated by Sue and Lin Chuan. Shamora spoke up with such eerie response and revealed the tiger's name to be Larkin. She warned Larkin to not interfere with her plan since Larkin wishes to move on his own. While Larkin walks away, Chamora promised that the officers will die in such tragic death. But Larkin also promised to take the lives of those who killed his brothers, which was Lin Chuan. Meanwhile on the bridge, Lin Chuan realized that the jailbreakers had left. Su thought their opponents might plan on doing something more malicious. Lin Chuan then shared his thoughts in the battle. He told Su that he had observed the jailbreakers being controlled by the Blood Elves. Su was actually aware with the Blood Elf's power, which was called the power of the Blood Elf which they could control everyone by turning them into a blood successor. However, the Blood Elves has no idea with their powers technique. Su also revealed that they have encountered people who became uncontrollable with themselves because of the Blood Elf, unfortunately. Su and her team couldn't do anything about it since the aftermath might cause more chaos on the victim's mental state. Lin Chuan began to have a lot of conclusions in his mind with how horrifying the Blood Elf race was to the point that his powerful leader Su was almost controlled by Chamor. Lin Chuan suddenly had anxiety when he realized he just walked past the gates of hell. But Su comforts Lin Chuan to not overthink. She admits that it was her fault since she dragged students on such dangerous mission, yet he praised Lin Chuan for his outstanding performance, and even promised to give him a reward. Lin Chuan realized he just faced the most notorious enemy and decided to become more stronger, until he received a notification from his centroid bracelet. Lin Chuan awkwardly asked Su a favor if he could head home first. Lin Chuan finally got home while looking for his cat, until he finally found his cat which he named Blue Meow. Blue Meow seemed to be not pleased with Lin Chuan's presence. Lin Chuan was disappointed at Blue Meow for acting such a brat, since he had his mice device to record every Blue Meow's move while he was away. Lin Chuan even accused Blue Meow to be the Blood Elf's spy. Blue Meow thought of Lin Chuan to be out of his mind. Lin Chuan began to interrogate Blue Meow, but Blue Meow finds the situation to be weird. But then Blue Meow suddenly fainted. Later that night, at the mansion where Chamora's power was active, there was a vice commander who got kidnapped and was being tortured. Chamora was impressed with how long the vice commander was holding out for his life and decided to intensify her power. Chamora's underling pulled a painting with a symbol. And all of a sudden, the vice commander was on the verge of losing his mind. While Larkin on the back made deal with Chamor that if ever her power fails, he hoped he gets to eat the vice commander. Chamor accepted the deal with no remorse since a human life was nothing for her. The vice commander couldn't even stand straight and began shivering. The terror on his face was shown while blood pours out on his eyes, nose, and mouth. Until someone interfered to stop Chamor from torturing the vice commander, the long-haired man brought a red book with him. With his book, he casted a spell, and puts the spell directly at the vice commander. The vice commander's eyes turned red. He began to go on berserk. While he just lost control of himself, Chamor and the rest smiled so horrendously with their inhumane activity. Meanwhile at the White Arrow Harbor, on a laboratory, there was a mice who seemed to be a lab rat. The micas were all violent even with their own kind. Their eyes were all full red and unconstrained. Then Lin Chuan was actually the one conducting the experiment. He had noticed that the violent reaction of the mice occurred after he mixed their food with the blood tribes he collected in the battle. Lin Chuan then pulled a device and pushed the button. 
Suddenly, the Mika's eyes turned back to normal. Lin Chuan couldn't believe the device which he called the Blood Elf Brain Disrupting Headband would actually work. Even though his experiment seemed to be painful by its effects, it was quite effective and helpful. Since Lin Chuan's headband device worked, he thought of conducting another experiment by using again crafted for blood elves. He then immediately grabbed his gun. But then he noticed Blue Miao who was peacefully sleeping and thought of making Blue Miao as his test subject. Lin Chuan smiled so maliciously since he believed Blue Miao was just pretending to be asleep. Lin Chuan puts Blue Miao with a possessed mice. Lin Chuan pulled the trigger and shot the mic his tail. All of a sudden, Lin Chuan witnessed a weird discovery when the mice starts to burn on its own. Blue Miao was startled by the gunshot, while Lin Chuan noticed that THR fire spread so fast. Blue Miao began to run for his life, until Lin Chuan tried to reach him. Blue Miao was already terrified by Lin Chuan's sadistic behavior, while Lin Chuan still believes that Blue Miao was no ordinary. Lin Chuan even decided to interrogate Blue Miao while he was holding a grip from his tail, but all Blue Miao could do was cry with his heart out. The next day, somewhere in a place where it was smoky, there was Lin Chuan happily running to work since he took a shortcut. Lin Chuan then parkered across a wall. But as he looked up, he saw something familiar. In front of him, there was a mysterious guy standing in th middle of the thick smokes. And the mystery guy turned out to be Vice Commander named Mike. Lin Chuan began to have suspicion as he witnessed Vice Commander Mike to be out of nowhere instead of being on duty. Mike went berserk and started blaming Sue's team for having great reputation in their organization. He couldn't control himself to the point he starts threatening Lin Chuan's life. But Lin Chuan who fully trusted his subordinates still couldn't comprehend that Mike was being a threat in the situation. Lin Chuan spoke gently to calm Mike down. But for Lin Chuan, he knew it would be a better idea if Su was the one to handle the situation. But as he tried to contact Su, there was no signal on his centroid bracelet. Mike revealed that he blocked all the signals. It made Lin Chuan realize that Mike really has a murderous intention and was out of his mind. Mike's eyes suddenly became a full glowing red. He smiled viscously as he told Lin Chuan that he'll die. Until Lin Chuan realized that Mike was possessed and became the hidden blood successor. Mike dashed with his hands raising that looked like a sharp claw ready to kill Lin Chuan. Lin Chuan didn't think of fighting back. He still chose to be professional and let the higher ranks to handle the situation as he shielded himself from Mike's attack. Mike doesn't intend to listen to every word that Lin Chuan spat. He became reckless and mindless that his only goal was to kill. Lin Chuan realized that he was already in a disadvantageous situation that it left him no choice but to fight back. Lin Chuan pulled his dagger and swung against Mike. But Mike dodged the attack and even laughed hysterically towards Lin Chuan. Until Lin Chuan raises his hands and snapped. Until all his devices were summoned in the scene. Lin Chuan believed that Mike won't be able to dodge the numerous gadgets that surround him. Lin Chuan smirked with his smart battle method. He thought of adding more support since he wasn't fast like Mile. But Lin Chuan had more trick up in his sleeves, since the Blood Elves had no idea that Lin Chuan created a bullet that will severely affect the Blood Elves with one shot. But unfortunately, Lin Chuan couldn't kill his subordinate. Until something mysterious glowed on Lin Chuan's chest in the middle of the battle. The glow on his chest was a reminder that he was about to break through to the seventh stage. Even Lin Chuan was shocked to see himself go through such breakthrough at a time in need. While Commander Mike transformed into a beast-looking creature. Lin Chuan still wanted to take it easy since he knew Commander Mike was his ally, but unfortunately, he couldn't control his new stage ability. But the solution he could think of was to let his devices to paralyze Mike. As Mike dashed his body, the devices released lasers that will give Mike a disadvantage. But Mike got lucky and dodged all the lasers. Mike was slightly hit by the lasers, but it seemed like he wasn't affected by it and continued smiling so maliciously. He intimidatingly glared at Lin Chuan and hoped he could end his life. While Lin Chuan was terrified by how active Mike was despite being hit by the lasers that could paralyze him, Mike clenched his fist and instantly punched Lin Chuan on the guts. Lin Chuan was severely in pain with one hit, that he ended up flying away while screaming in agony. Lin Chuan stumbled on the ground, while Mike wasn't satisfied until he could end Lin Chuan's life. Lin Chuan realized that Mike was way stronger than the enemies he had fought before until he ran out of ideas to fight back. As Mike approaches him, he warned Lin Chuan to not even think of running away. With a horrible smile on his face, he promised to slice every bits of Lin Chuan's body. And all of a sudden, a brick appeared on the sky, and it directly hit on Mike's face. It seemed like Lin Chuan wasn't alone at the battle, until multiple bricks were seen at the sky. That even Lin Chuan wasn't aware who could be the mystery person who tried to save him. As the two of them looked back, they saw a wolf figure in the middle of the thick smokes. The creature smirked as it looked directly at Lin Chuan and Mike. It turns out, the creature was Blue Miao. 
Lin Chuan was in shock to see that his pet actually had some purpose, though he couldn't understand Blue Meow. He knew his cat is about to do something good. Mike laughed hysterically that a small and cute cat was the one who saved Lin Chuan. But then Mike realized that the cat could be abnormal. Blue Meow was deeply offended that Mike sees him as a mere object. In Blue Meow's cat language, he asked Lin Chuan about how he could contribute in the battle. Lin Chuan then tossed a head that could turn any possessed being back to normal and favored Blue Meow to put it on Mike's head if they could find an opening. The unexpected duo was pumped up to fight against Mike. The battle continued with Blue Meow kept screaming until Mike was defeated and found lying on the ground. He got up and went back to normal with a headache and no memory of what happened to him. As he looked on his wrist, he saw himself wearing the device that Lin Chuan had made. Mike made a call to his supervisors and was advised to lay low and rest for a while. On the other side, Lin Chuan and Blue Miao observed Mike to see how he was doing after being controlled by Chamora's power. Lin Chuan was glad that his device was totally effective, but cons of it was it could erase a memory for two hours. Since Lin Chuan had Mike wearing the device, he used it as an advantage to get the elf blood's whereabouts. Later then, Mike was picked up by the organization and was still doing fine despite being severely tortured by Chamora before. Later that day, at the elf blood's hideout, Lin Chuan saw Mike being in front of Chamora's mansion. He seemed like he haven't got a grip of himself. While Lin Chuan felt a sudden headache with the elf blood's hideout's intense aura, Mike then got inside of the mansion. In front of him was Chamor and the long-haired man who triggered Mike to go berserk. Mike was reminded by the long-haired man to lay low until September 9 which they planned to cause chaos. Mike then had the guts to ask Chamora if her plan will ever work. But Chamora reassured that she doesn't only have one plan and warned Mike to never snoop into her personal business since Mike was just a blood successor. Fast forward to the operation. It was finally 9th of September at the bridge Leba where Sue almost became a blood successor. A truck was about to enter the bridge but was stopped at a checkpoint. The wolf acted like a polite citizen and asked if there was something wrong at the White Arrow Harbor. The wolf smiled innocently while the guard explained that he and the rest of the guard might lose their jobs if ever something terrifying happens again. The guard instantly believed the wolf to be someone who's harmless and let it enter to the White Arrow Harbor. The truck went in. But then, the wolf's innocent face turned evil as they reminded Chamor that they had successfully gotten and could proceed with their operation. They all laughed hysterically for making a fool out of the guard. And all of a sudden, a riot and explosion occurred at the White Arrow Harbor. The citizens panicked including the guards who desperately contacted the higher-ups for backup. The guard repeatedly informed the higher-up that three explosions had occurred and that the cause might be a terrorist attack. The guard was desperate to be heard. Meanwhile, Chamora and her team was a bystander as they watched the sufferings of the civilians. Chamora was pleased and satisfied to hear all the painful screams and agony. Chamora smirked as she informed her team that the next thing they would explode was the water dam. All the elf blood and blood successor rushes to the water dam as soon as Chamora ordered them since there will be no reinforcement to stop them. All the guards were attacked, while some underlings attached a flesh bomb in the underground of the city. In that underground, multiple guards were murdered. While Su and the rest was briefly observing the chaos, Su turned and asked Lin Chuan about how he was aware of the elf blood's attack. Lin Chuan was nervous with the sudden pressuring question. But then, Su let it slide since they have no time with interrogating one another. Su rushes and ordered her team to annihilate all the enemies while she seeks for the elf blood's leader. She believed that the safety of the citizens will be on her hands. Lin Chuan immediately understood Su's reasons and immediately got up. He then asked for Mu Xiuengai and Mai Kang to go along with him to fight against the enemies. The timer of the flesh bomb kept ticking, while Lin Chuan and his friends are on the move. The elf bloods uses their shrieking abilities, and made the guards stumble on the ground for not able to resist the noise. The elf blood laughed and insulted the human beings for being peasants and unpowered like their kind. But behind the elf blood was Lin Chuan and Mu Xiuengai. Mu Xiuengai then pulled her gun, and instantly shot the elf blood through his heart. The elf blood's partner was alerted with the sudden intrusion. There were two officers who witnessed the place to be filled with flesh bombs and dead people, yet they still wondered where the elf bloods could be. Lin Chuan responded to the two officers on the generator room and reported that his side saved two people. He also informed the two officers that in his side, there were also flesh bombs that were planted. Mu Xiuengai comforts the guards who were harmed by the elf bloods. Unfortunately, the guards couldn't get up immediately. Mu Xiuengai then asked Lin Chuan to brainstorm on how to effectively rescue the guards. Lin Chuan then told Mu Xiuengai that they don't have much time to search for more enemies from section to section. But then the two of them decided to head to the monitor room for them to do the job easier. As they opened the door, the first thing they saw was two guards and one elf blood being murdered. Lin Chuan was disgusted to witness an elf blood being a captain in their area. 
Lin Chuan immediately opened the computer to check all the enemy's whereabouts. The first thing that Lin Chuan saw at the monitor was the enemy leaders. Even though he had witnessed them through a computer, Lin Chuan still could feel the evil aura. Lin Chuan immediately reported what he witnessed to Su that the enemy leaders were about to enter the water tunnel. While Su fights mercilessly, she immediately got the reports and about to head on to the enemy leaders. But before Su goes straight to the enemy, Lin Chuan was worried that Su might not be able to defeat them since there are multiple enemies. But Su reassured that she could handle it on her own and for Lin Chuan and his friends to stick with their mission. But Lin Chuan felt uneasy and decided to make an opening for Su. Lin Chuan had an idea and reminded Mu Xuengai that she was ordered to get the explosives before the chaos. Lin Chuan revealed that he plans to gather all the enemies in the explosive room to blow them all up at once. Lin Chuan analyzes the map to make sure the enemies won't be able to escape by blocking the emergency stairs. Lin Chuan then called for Mai Kang to destroy the emergency stairs with explosives. Mai Kang wanted Lin Chuan to explain but they don't have enough time. Mai Kang just went along since he fully trusted Lin Chuan as his ally. Lin Chuan then favored Su to head to the generator room and that the rest of the team will do the same afterward. Su realized that Lin Chuan still did as he pleases to help her, but Lin Chuan assures that he has a plan to lure all the enemies to the generator room. Lin Chuan hoped for his team to trust him in order for his plan to be successful. Su thought of her decision thoroughly, but she has no choice but to trust Lin Chuan since she finally realized that a teamwork will do the just effectively. On the enemy leader's side, the power suddenly went off. Shamora noticed the suspicious power outage immediately, until an explosion from the emergency stairs had occurred. Shamora and the rest heard the explosion, and could confirm that it was from the emergency stairs. Shamora realized that something fishy was going on, until an announcement was made for the elf blood that they have been surrounded by the officers, and warned them to surrender immediately. Larkin was triggered as he heard a police officer's voice. Larkin recklessly left Shamora, and the rest behind and thought it was a good idea to go against the officers. But Chamor and the rest think it would be a great idea to ignore Larkin since he would be a liability to their plan. Moments before the announcement, at the monitor room there was Lin Chuan and Mu Xuengai. Lin Chuan informed Mu Xuengai that the elf blood had took the bait for them to head to the generator room. Meanwhile at the generator room, Mai Kang and the rest had arrived and was finished with the explosive preparations. Su had a smile on her face as she realized Lin Chuan's plan all along. Lin Chuan and Mu Xuengai rushes over to make it in time while Chamor and the rest does the same thing. But while Lin Chuan and Mu Xuengai were in a hurry, Larkin appeared all of a sudden. Larkin was satisfied as he found a police officers which he despised so deeply. Lin Chuan and Mu Xuengai went pale as they were surprised by the unexpected appearance of Larkin. Larkin instantly counterattacked the two of them, while Chamor and the rest had finally arrived at the generator room. Chamor ordered her underlings to search for the problem in the room since none of it seemed to be damage in her eyes, until Su appeared in front of them. Su got the generator power in her hands and informed Chamor and the rest that without it, nothing would be functional. Chamor also thought of asserting dominance by teasing Su of killing her instead of negotiating. Chamor's face became terrifying to look at when she thought Su was the mastermind of interfering her plan. Su then threw the generator power and ordered Chamor to destroy the flesh bombs. Mai Kang catched the generator power while Su dared Chamor on a battle with her. Chamor looked around to see if there were other officers in the room until Su drew her swords to provoke the enemy. Shamor then ordered her underlings to kill the officers and retrieve the main battery. But for Su, the battle was her enjoyment. Meanwhile on Lin Chuan's side, Larkin couldn't stop on harassing the two of them. Lin Chuan was severely hit by Larkin's fist, and even got him stumbled on the ground for its powerful strength. Lin Chuan favored Mu Xuengai to run away instead since Larkin was way too strong. But Mu Xuengai was a good friend and even thought of protecting Lin Chuan. Mu Xuengai was mad for Lin Chuan who thought it would be a good idea to leave him behind, until Larkin approached them to kill the two of them at once. On the generator room, Su handled all the outnumbered elf blood that surrounded her. But more crisis occurred when the long-haired man casted a spell. Su was aware that the spell might turn her into a blood successor like last time. While the long-haired man continued on casting the spell to subtract the powerful officer, the officers immediately got alerted that Su might need a hand. Mai Kang ordered his subordinates to activate the explosives immediately. Kerry then pushed the button, and all of a sudden, the generator room exploded. Meanwhile, Lin Chuan and Mu Xuengai was being beaten up. Larkin had enough of making the two of them suffer and decided to just kill them instantly, until something glowed in a foggy spot. Mu Xuengai who was badly injured immediately recognized that the mysterious glowing thing was Lin Chuan. Larkin was intimidated as he unexpectedly witnessed Lin Chuan with his overpowered self. Lin Chuan stood in front of Larkin, 
with his presence being in a high state level. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel for more content like this. Leave a comment for the next part. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss a new video. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.